and welcome to the Sidebar Cantina, the podcast where we talk about Star Wars, pop culture, the arrival of spring, or whatever the fuck we feel like talking about. I am Mr. Jason Roskam, with me here each and every single week, the Darth Vader to my Palpatine, Dave Martin. Hello, Dave. Hello, Jason. How are you? Uh, I'm appreciative of the arrival of spring. Yes. But hate the fact that it was 85 fucking degrees in my office today yeah because the air force can't get their shit together and actually figure out how to operate their hvac systems and that's been an issue on that base since i first joined in 96. yep you know they can never get the uh the timing of the changing of the the air conditioning and the heat yeah never i same i've been on that base since 96 and there's always i think the fucking excuse is like oh well you know it has to all the buildings have to like cycle over like roughly the same time or there's there's some fucking nonsense. Yeah, some stupid bullshit, I'm sure. And it's so antiquated that the the fact that these systems have to be as manually like turned over as they do, like that CE has to like show up and like turn your building from like hot to cold like <laughs> Ding. okay right. now the ac is gonna fucking work come on come on buddy come on buddy yeah it's 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 2024 you know it's, right. it's time to modernize right and we just had a fucking contractor in doing like replacing air air handlers and shit like that mm -hmm. so the air is moving around beautifully in the in the fucking building it's just moving around hot air yeah so yeah 85 degrees in my fucking office so all i wanted to do is just like lay on the floor <laughs> just like i i can't exist today so yeah work sucks yeah uh so outside of work what are we talking about today um well we're talking about a little thing called the bad batch yes we're catching up on four four quattro yeah and uh, to cat cats episodes is that french french ah, gotcha. yes revert to yeah I, I, would, I don't know how I know that. I took four years of Spanish. Right. <laughs> um, yeah, I had something for that, and it's gone. It's gone. It's gone forever. Yeah. But yes, four episodes of The Bad Batch. Four episodes of The Bad Batch. Yeah. Yes, because we're, we're catching up. And uh, yeah, there will be spoilers. Oh, yeah. If you haven't been watching. And, um, and you know what's weird is um, I actually didn't watch any of them for the first time until two days ago. Like I hadn't been watching the most recent episodes because I'm like, ah, we'll do it for the podcast. I'll watch them the week before I got a coworker who was getting very upset with me because I wasn't watching the episodes. So I couldn't talk about it at work. Yeah. There's somebody in the, that works in the shop next to ours and he's the same way. He's like, have you watched it yet? I'm like, no God, dude, I haven't had time. Yeah. It's like, come on. I have nobody else to talk to about this. <laughs> I'm like, all right, it's fine. And all right, whatever. It, like, we're not, we're, spoiler alert, we're not, like, breaking any huge ground with these four episodes. No, but there's definitely a lot to talk about in them. There is. We got plenty to talk about, yeah. for sure. But, but it's not like, you know. Dave wants to see more fucking bodies. That's what Dave wants. <laughs> Dave wants bodies. I went, like, let the bodies hit the floor. Let the bo <laughs> like, I went, I went fucking dead clones sprayed everywhere we don't have enough of that yet but we'll get to there we'll, we'll get we'll get there you now all i can think about is splicing the goat scream into the song let the body sit the floor and then when the guy goes floor let you know the instead the floor. <laughs> no, geez, oh god what the hell was that <laughs> holy shit <laughs> <laughs> that was that was a little different from the goat scream, but oh my god! What? what okay, gotta, five five oh two. We got to go back to five oh two and listen got, to that. I got to warm up. This is, this is, I, I did do my warm up. Exercises. I don't know what that noise was, but it was great. <laughs> oh, RJ, no. RJ's RJ's upset about it. Yeah, it was it was very jarring for me too. <laughs> Oh, uh, okay. So let's get back on track here. All right. So we're talking about Bad Batch. Yes. Uh, let's get to Eventually. let's get to some business to take care of. Uh, uh -huh. Should we talk about Patreon first? Um, you could talk about Patreon while I finger fuck. Whoa! <laughs> oh God, <laughs> are you okay? 
Uh, see, this is this is what happens when Dave takes control of things. When he takes the soundboard, when he takes control of RJ, things just get fucking. What's where should the button to make chaos. noise? The uh, the speaker one, the one the bottom. There you go. Okay. All right. So we'd like to give a huge shout out to all of our current patrons: my wonderful mother-in-law Patricia Goodstein, Don Solsky, The Orange and Fett Show, Dragon Buddy, Sterling Asia, Helen Martin, Chantal from Pop My Culture, Ivo G, Scott and Kim from Used and Abused, <laughs> Catherine Rennick. Tina Land, Frederick Martin, Wally Frogmore, Lord Helmet Fire, Carly Vickers, David Schmuck, Frank Kalevich, Nick from Swede Studios, Kristen Roscom, Shotgun Mark, and Brady Big Lovin. If you'd like to consider becoming a supporter, you can find us at patreon.com slash the sidebar cantina. And one of the benefits of being a member is giveaways. Uh, oh, nice. Don Solsky won, um, he won a giveaway to almost a month ago now. I, yeah, about a week ago. Yeah, and then um, so we're giving away next week uh, a copy of the next novel that we're going to be covering, and that's the Living Force. So next week we're going to give it away to one of our Patreon supporters, uh, and we're going to cover it mid-May. It looks like a dish. Yeah, look yeah. at that. Look at all these losers on there. Look at them. All these. <laughs> look, look, look at that guy. You see that guy? Oh, Yarrow Poof. Yeah, look, look at that guy. Oh, my God. I'll he never looks... look at him the same after Robot Chicken. Yeah, I know. Uh, it's, 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 dude. Everyone I know is dead. <laughs> he comes back with the pizzas. Yeah. Uh... I t did I tell you I'm doing this thing where... Um, I, I think I did tell you, but for the benefit of everyone else. the Because I thought we were doing the book earlier... Mm -hmm. I had it in my head. I'm like, fuck, I got to do this fast. The, I'm listening to the book and also reading it. Mm -hmm. So while I'm in the car, I'm listening to it. Mm -hmm. And then I'm, you know, cracking the book and reading up to a point and then advancing, like getting to a chapter and then advancing to that chapter. Yeah. It's, I don't recommend it. I really don't. It, all the things that I tell you that for me, I have issues like with Star Wars audiobooks. Mm -hmm. It's Mark Thompson, and he does a he does a fine job. He is a he is a nice fella, but going back and forth is whew. yeah. I couldn't imagine like trying to focus on one than the other, and yeah, it's uh, it's been a thing. Yeah. So I I don't recommend that. You have time to choose. Like either sit down and read a nice book in this nice weather, or and while you're in the car, listen to the audio book. If you're a Patreon supporter, you can potentially win a yeah. copy of this in some form or fashion. Yeah, and uh, you know it's not too late. Me. If you're listening or watching to us this week and you're not a Patreon supporter, you can become one before next Monday, and you will be eligible yes. for the drawing. You can watch to us as well. What? That's what you said. You're listening or watching to us. Oh. <laughs> no, I said watching or listening to us. No, you did, it, was, it, it was inverted. All right. I it call shenanigans. The, it was an inverse. All no, right. Look Nine, it up. 9-11. Look it up, bitches. 9-11. Nine, nine you, nine I'm, I'm writing down timestamps. 37. Today. My girlfriend sucked 37 <laughs> dicks. In a row? Uh, and anyway, so yeah. Book giveaway next week, and we... Uh, Hold on. I, I, I can't. I can't not read the script. Like, I don't have it memorized. Yeah, read the goddamn script. Yeah. Jeez. Uh, thank you again to all of our listeners and supporters. You are the reason why we do this. You would think I would know that by now, but, like, it, I, I, I need the teleprompter. It's... Yep. I don't know what the fuck. Well, read that, bitch. Uh, speaking of... Read what? Read the screen. Uh, your screen? Oh, Dave's right. Of course she sides with you. <sighs> Anyway, do we have any sidebar headlines? Yes. Uh, in case you missed it, last week, Helmet Fire and I did an impromptu live stream of the solar eclipse from Halton, Maine. Yeah. Uh, you can relive the totality experience right here on YouTube. I was watching that live, too. Yeah. I, I, and I will talk more about the eclipse uh, when it comes to my week, because mm -hmm. that, honestly, I think that's probably the only thing I remember doing <laughs> this time last week. Um, yeah, and we'll talk more about that for sure. But you can go to yeah, go to our YouTube channel, and uh, if you really you don't want to watch us stand there and just take pictures and hear random shit for 
45 minutes, mm -hmm. skip to 43 minutes and 33 seconds, and you'll get the 60 minute out or 60 second out call for uh, for when totality happens and you get to see all the magic. Yeah. And I'm telling you, I get goosebumps every time I watch it. Yeah. Uh, even now. Wow. Every time. I mean, well, we'll get into it when we get yeah. to uh, get to your week, but I would imagine like being there in person was far yeah. better than watching it on the stream. We're, we'll we'll certainly get to it. Okay. Anything else, sidebar wise? Nope. All righty. So we got a couple of uh, Star Wars things that came out last week while we were on a hiatus. Yeah, yeah. Uh, first of all, there was the so. We were told earlier in the year that another season of Tales of the Jedi was coming to Disney Plus, right? And then, yes. uh, you know, we didn't know anything about it. We didn't know who the characters were. And then they released their trailer for it last week, but they did the old uh, rope a dope. Instead of Tales of the Jedi, we are getting Tales of the Empire. Yes. And you have not seen. I have not. This trailer. So Dave is going to watch it live here on the show. Um, once he's done playing with uh, RJ, so I got it queued up, man. Are you, are you ready to see the trailer for Tales of the Jedi? Yeah, let's do Tales this. The thing. Empire for the first time. All yeah. right, here we go. Um, do you want subtitles on or off? Uh, I should be able to hear it, right? I would imagine. But... Yeah. So we're... okay, okay, we'll turn them off. Fine. Why do you seek Imperial favor? So immediately we get Thrawn, which is awesome. Years ago, my people were all but destroyed. My anger gives me strength. It is that strength I offer the Empire. Offer accepted. So, pause real quick. So we got Morgan Elspeth talking to Thrawn. Thrawn, you look at his rank and he is... He's a younger officer in that scene. Right. So we don't know when this is, but this is probably the first meeting between Thrawn and Morgan Elspeth. Yeah, because I don't remember in any of the Thrawn books we've read an encounter. No, her. definitely not. The only the only things we know from her are from Mandalorian and Ahsoka. And again, we're, we all the Thrawn books we have read, it's not the life and times of fucking Thrawn. It's, no. It's no. only some very specific uh, storylines. With some of his backstory. Which, by the way, we need to schedule the second uh, second Thrawn book for the uh, the Ascendancy. Oh, we haven't done that? No, we've only done the first one. Yeah, see, RJ, RJ knows. So, anyway, all right, continuing with the trailer. I'm here to present you with an opportunity, Barris. What? Just be glad you're not a Jedi anymore. Yeah, so you're Barris Offee... Who, if we remember from the Clone Wars, um, or from Rule Thirty Four, well, <laughs> uh, that that comes up every episode for some I, reason. That's the first thing I thought of when I saw her. Right, but um, you know, last we saw from her, she betrayed Ahsoka, right, um, and the Jedi Order, and right. got captured and was put in Jedi jail. Yes. So now we're picking up uh, what happens with her after the fact. Yes. Path is set, Morgan Elspeth. I will fulfill my destiny. That's her with the best car staff. Mercy only breeds oh, defeat. But I will help you overcome this weakness. So we've got Barris being, you know, essentially turned into an inquisitor. Which, I mean, did, did we know this before? Like, uh, I don't think I... we knew what happened to her. No, I don't think so. So, yeah, like she's now in front of the Grand Inquisitor. Wow. Uh, yeah, so we'll keep going. Attack! You said the Empire would help to change things. Ever. This that is familiar. Well, yeah, this is the town that we first see Morgan Elspeth in in Mandalorian. Right. In, what was it? Uh, season two of Mandalorian, where uh, the yeah. Ahsoka episode? Yep. Yeah, that's that same town, that bridge that her and Ahsoka fought on. Yep. Thanks. Everything comes at a cost. My world has been burning. Yeah, so we get a... Dude, we're getting everybody. Yeah, we get Morgan versus fucking Grievous. Fucking hell. So that could be interesting. Since I was a child, you cannot stop what has begun. 
was Barris in fucking uh, Inquisitor gear with an Inquisitor saber. Now you must face one final test. Did that, didn't that remind you of fucking uh, a couple of seconds ago of uh, like, um, oh, what the fuck? Um, Starkiller. Oh, uh, yeah, yeah. You know, when he was he, like, when he just fucking explodes. Yeah, yeah, he goes and, fucking and, ape shit. Yeah. Yeah, no, I can see Re- that. Rewind it a little bit. Okay. Bloop. All right, go. Yeah. Right Stop. What has begun? Ooh, now you yeah. must face one final test to join us. It is time you meet your new master. Uh huh. Yep. Now look at that right there. Does that not look like fucking um? What's his nuts? Um, Maroc from Ahsoka. It does. Yeah, not the guy on the right there, but the the one to the left. Look at that fucking sweet, sweet Empire emblem on him. Though. Yeah, the guy on the right. I'm pretty sure that's the guy that um, Ahsoka killed in Tales of the Jedi. Okay. Yeah, I'm pretty sure that's that sweet looking Inquisitor that she uh, that she offed in uh, in that story. But yeah, that looks like Maroc to his left. So wow. Yeah. Course. Long live the Empire. Yeah, so original shorts? Yeah, so, because if you remember the Tales of the Jedi, oh, there, there were right. a bunch of short stories. Yeah. There was like the one with fucking Qui-Gon, there was the one with uh Dooku, where he killed fucking uh Yaddle. Yeah. Um what else was in there? Though there was the Ahsoka one where she killed that Inquisitor. It was kind of like the ad- adaptation of the book, like the last scene of the book where she's on the farm and the Inquisitor shows up. Yeah. You don't remember any of this, do you? <laughs> well, I, I do vaguely. Yeah. Because because reasons. Yeah. But I just had a thought for what we could potentially be doing. Um. Oh, yeah, because this comes out May 4th, so we'll need to... Uh... We need to brush up on that. Yeah, so we'll have to. <laughs> Sorry, Kelly, our schedule might change again. I totally yeah. forgot that that's coming out yeah. so soon. Holy shit, man. That was fucking awesome. Yeah, yeah. So it's, it's basically, it seems like it's two stories. One about Morgan Elspeth and one about fucking Barris Offy. Right. So. Yeah, that's awesome. I can't wait. Yeah. Uh, and it's, of course, it's May the 4th, and we're we're going to be up to our fucking elbows in, in Star Wars Oh, yeah. At, at, at fucking the Fan it's, Expo. Yeah, yeah, because we're going to be meeting a lot of these fucking people. And wouldn't it be awesome if they were fucking showing it there? That would be cool. I don't know if that would be the case, but you never know. You never fucking know. Yeah. Um, fuck, what was I going to say? Uh, yeah, May the 4th. It, like, so much shit is going on on May the 4th this yeah, year. It's uh, as, Obviously, as it, it's our anniversary. Right. Um, We've got fucking Phantom Menace we're watching on the 3rd. Yep. Going to the Fan Expo on the 4th. Right. And then the Bad Batch finale is that week also. So we're going to be covering the Bad Batch finale. Yeah. And I'll, and most likely, I'll be at Fan Expo the whole weekend. Yeah. So it'll be... Uh, apparently, we've got a pretty strong storm about to blow through. So if, uh, if our feed cuts, then that's why. Um, I got a text just now. Eh, it doesn't look too bad. Anyway, so, uh, yeah, and I'm really curious about the Barris uh, story as Dude, well. Her I, becoming an Inquisitor and... I, you know, for all the times that we say, like, ah, oh, leave these stories, like, you know, there's so much better stories to be told, but this is, like, I am intrigued. Yeah. Because, especially if you're doing it in this format, you're not, like, dragging something out that... What is that clicking? Did you hear that? No. Is the clicking with us in this room right now? <laughs> Maybe. Uh, so, um, so, but yeah, no, the, the Tales of the Empire looks awesome. I'm glad that they're yes. taking a dark side perspective, which is, it's interesting too, because we already know with the Acolyte coming out in a couple of months, they're already looking at that from a dark side point of view. So now we're getting another show like that with tells the empire so hey look man 
the fucking dark side rocks. Yeah. Like it, you want you want drama, you want fucking energy. Focus on the dark side. Hell yeah. Like just, they they could do a whole show about the fucking ISB. You know, like yeah. we got Nandor. Yeah. Oh. Yeah, I I I fucking one hundred percent support that. I'm I'm so looking forward to. I was talking to Rick about this, uh, Patreon supporter uh, Rick in the who is in the chat probably not for much longer. Mm-hmm. We're we're kind of talking about the shows that are out and like sequels and kind of like where Mandalorian kind of like went a little bit too broad in their scope and if they had stayed as the Western style, it probably would have you know been a little bit better. Yeah. Um, Andor as well, like the fir- that they have to stay in that same. They have to stay in that same lane. Yes. If they if they try and expand into something and do something else into the, into the greater galaxy, I think they'll, it'll be horribly, horribly wrong and fail. Yeah. Like they have to. Like they had this thing by the fucking nuts. Yeah. They need to keep that same tone, that yeah. same energy. They have to make us like keep us on the edge of our seats and fucking make us want to watch it every fucking week. Yeah. Yeah. Because oh my god, that's gonna be like one of the hottest fucking. Uh, shows when that comes out. Yeah, and I agree with Bronco Fett, man. I was watching that, and like, like yeah, there's got to be there's more figures. Oh yeah, yeah. That, in, right? in that Tales of the Jedi trailer. Yeah, there's, yeah. There's all kinds a, of black black series figures. There's going to be a, there's going to be a black series Barris in here, mm-hmm. like no doubt. Do, is there? Do you have a Barris? Um, no, a not Jedi a Jedi Barris. No, I don't think so. I don't know if they came out with one for her. Honestly, mm, well, I no. have Ala Sakura, but that doesn't count. You're going to learn today. Well, I mean, she's. You She's special. She is very special. Very special. Especially in those early Clone Wars episodes. Hey, no. <laughs> uh, so anyway, that wasn't the only trailer, Star Wars-wise, that we got in the last yes, week. Yes, an we, embarrassment of riches. Yes, we also got the Star Wars Outlaws, the, yes. the story trailer for the right. video game that's coming out in August, I believe. Right. Um, now, I believe you said you have already seen this. I have but, seen this one, but roll the tape. But yeah, we're going to go ahead and do it anyway. So we'll do it anyway. So let's do it. Star Wars Outlaw story trailer. Each of you represents some of the most powerful criminal organizations in the galaxy. Pikes, Crimson Dawn, Huts. Now, I do love the fact that they're bringing all the, the criminal uh, organizations together. You mean kind of doing like they were hinting at doing with Boba Fett? Yeah, but then, Boba they, Fett. but then they didn't. And then they chose to have this like redemption arc. Yeah. Talking about... It was awful. Yeah, show's going astray. Jeez. Yep. Anyway, carrying on. It's a golden age for the underworld. The Empire controls every corner of the galaxy, but they're distracted by a rebellion that won't quit. It's an opportunity to make millions. Which, I mean, makes a lot of sense, right? Yeah. You know, making millions while the Empire is in control and they're really locking down and they're worried about the rebels. You know, fucking, this is a great time for crime syndicates to rise up. Right. So. And then, of course, another female protagonist because that's Star Wars now. Every, every new piece of Canon has to have a female protagonist as your main character. Look at the fucking tales of the Empire. Both about chicks. This one's about a chick. It's like we get it, guys. Okay. I'm I'm okay with with Barris because we've already been introduced. Sure. Like there's there's actual like sorry, I put the controller down. <laughs> I I I would literally play with you all day. And that <laughs> it's very distracting for me and for for you. So We'll just sit For the record, he's talking to the droid. I am talking to the droid. <laughs> um, but anyway, I just wanted to throw that out there. No, I, t- I give Tales of the Jedi, like, Barris. Yeah, because they're characters that we've yeah. already been introduced to and everything. Yeah, but... and I'm fine with that. This one, they didn't have to. Whatever. Yeah. Whatever. And that's that's how I feel. I'm not like one of these guys that's going to go crying on YouTube. In fact, I've been avoiding videos like that. But at the same time, it's like, come on, man. Can, can we have a dude every once in a while? Come on, buddy. Come on, buddy. Vess, the underworld's favorite new scoundrel. We meet at last. What do you want? This is the one they took Halle Berry, right? They're this new. Is like Halle Berry's face. This is what it looks like. Uh, kind of. Um, 
I don't know. I don't know if they actually used her as a model for this, but whatever. You, rich, and lethal. You crossed their boss, Sliro, and now he wants you gone. Sliro sounds like a hut Rob his fortune, buy your freedom. This job, it's a death wish. Get a nice shot of her in Jabba's palace looking at Han frozen in carbonate, which gives us an e exact... Um, right, this is a timestamp of, of exactly when this is. Yeah. I'm in. Out here, you live and die by your reputation. That voice sounds survive. Uh, know the players. <laughs> that was a female Mon Calamari that was just talking. I guess you need females. I yeah. Mean, somebody's got to lay the eggs. Oh, yeah, yeah. No, no, I'm just saying, like, <laughs> like we haven't seen any of those as far as I know. Right. Um, in any canon. She's got that real raspy voice, too. I'm smoking a lot of cigarettes <laughs> while the men are away. Yeah. You know, flying ships and shit. We're, we're at home laying eggs and smoking. Yeah. Now, I love graphically, I love those outer shots that we saw of like the city and the, the planetscapes. But when you get close up on the faces, I think it looks like shit. Um, especially the main character, like her, her facial animation does, does not look good. Hopefully, it's not the final product. Probably not. I mean, honestly, we're probably seeing it the same way we saw um, the Force Unleashed. Not Force Unleashed. Force Unleashed is what I was trying to come up with earlier. Oh. With fucking Starkiller. <laughs> I'm trying to think of now is Cal Kestis and that the game that he's in. That Jedi I, Fallen Order. That and one. Jedi Survivor. Fa <laughs> Fallen Order. It's like Fallen Order graphics. Yeah. Like not Survivor. Because Survivor, I think the graphics were pretty fucking tight. Oh, yeah, yeah. Because it was made for the next generation. Xbox Sex. Yeah. So, but yeah, no, it just, uh, hopefully, uh, this world her face problem. gets better. Come back when you're not. Jabba, right? Look, don't yeah, try anything. Jabba. I got a whole crew surrounding this. Okay, we're skipping that part. What are the odds she ends up in a gold bikini at some point? Probably pretty low. Yeah. What are your first thoughts when you look at this uh, screenshot right here? Uh, it reminds me of Battlefront. Yeah, exactly. That's yeah. exactly what I'm thinking, too. I'm looking at that. I'm like, oh, God, that's that side you door. Need tie, you need a TIE fighter like up in, up in this area, mm -hmm. like kind of at a catty corner pointed that way with some boxes. And you got some ties over there. Yeah. They're in the wrong spot. You need a some elevation there with the platform. Yeah, but it looks just like that. Fucking, it does. That Battlefront level. So cool. God, so For good. about as long as I can remember, it's just been me and Nyx. Doing what we have to to survive. Seems like there's going to be a lot of this stealth in this game. This is my one shot at freedom. But if we're going to pull this off, we need the right crew. I love that battle droid looking guy. Like the fucking the battle droid dude in the trench coat. Uh-huh. Um, because, you know, I, I love shit like that, like repurposed uh, characters or droids like from the prequel era that are right. just kind of like hanging out in the universe now, just like doing whatever. So I'd love to know what this dude's backstory is. We need the right crew and the right ship. Protocol droid. Stealing a ship. Because you were one of the best hunters in the Outer Rim. She's more connected than you let on, Slero. Bess is mixed up in something bigger. The Outer Rim is a dangerous that place. That was a sweet shot of the planet. Everyone is fighting for their piece of the galaxy. Yeah. But all I want is to live free. So I'm gonna risk it all. Oh, sandworm. They're on Arrakis. <laughs> um, but yeah, so Outlaws comes out August 30th, which is not that far away. I. So this is obviously... Uh, who, who, who's running this? This is Ubisoft. So Ubisoft. It's, so it's not EA. So this is one of the first big Star Wars games that wasn't released under the EA banner. Um, yeah, I'm... I feel like we've played this game already. You think so? Yeah. I, I've, 
because we had Fallen Order, we had Survivor. Like, I feel like this is a lot of the same game. Like, what are you going to do when you're done with this story? Yeah. What, I, are you going to have a very similar experience where it's like, okay, now I can fly back around to these planets. And, like, I d it doesn't seem like it's something that you're going to be able to do much open world with. Right, like, right. Like, and, and have, yeah, you have probably, a dynamic experience. You know what I mean? Yeah, I don't think that there's going to be a lot of freedom in this one like there is in the Jedi games. Yeah. I think it's going to be more structured, more this is your mission in this location. Now go do it. But... I, I think uh, somebody in the chat, I think it was uh, Scott from Use and Abuse that mentioned that, like, the. Yeah, it was 130 bucks for the Ultimate Edition. Like, $130 wow. for a game that I'm I'm going to play through the story. And, like, I, I don't know. Uh, that, well, that better come with some nice fucking extras. It better come with a fucking handy. Yeah. Like, I know, honestly, right? for. I, look, I'm. I love the idea of having another star wars game and of course i'm going to get it yeah i'm not going to get the 130 thirty dollar version i'm going to get the version that the xbox sex will fucking i'll be able to play and if it has dlc then great but this is a very specific time period i i'm really curious to see like how much how open this world is if at all yeah somehow i doubt it's going to be yeah, um, and, and that's that's the part that bothers me. Like, I want an open world fucking game. I I want to unlock fucking Fallen Order to the point, or Survivor to the point where it's like actually like true freedom of movement, like open world type thing. Yeah. Um. And we're probably. I mean, I I don't know how far away we are from something like that. I mean, shit. Fran, I sure hope you're kidding. About the no Jabba with the seventy dollar version of the game, uh, because that would be fucked up. Star Wars Assassin's Creed. I mean, I, I've never played an Assassin's Creed game in my life. Really? Yeah. Well, because again, I don't like stealth games. I yeah. like just fucking running and gunning and just fucking kick down the goddamn door and just ah. I don't know. There, there's this. She, nope, not kidding. Oh, that that's going to be uh, an issue. Like, you wouldn't get to play that part of the game where she comes across Jabba and Han and Carbonite? All right, we're going to do some more investigating into yeah, this. Because if that's the case, then... That's kind of fucked up. Then, yeah, we're going to we're gonna have to have a, a portion of an episode where we yeah, just talk shit about Ubisoft. Minimal, huh? Yeah, that's... that. Is, yeah, I think that's going to require some uh, some deep deep digging yeah to uh to unearth what the fuck is going on yeah with that. And, and we have until august 30th so we'll uh yeah. we'll, we'll we will put a pin in that and we yes. will uh re-engage otherwise known as kelly remind us that we're going to come back to that <laughs> because yeah that's fucked she's up she's probably got a list that's like fucking a hundred items long of just stuff that we're like kelly write this down yeah that we've never gone back to i i, I think we've come back to a couple of things <laughs> I mean, at least one or two. Yeah. All right. Well, we ready to move on to our weeks? Yeah. All right. Well, as always, I have some additions to... The Sacred Jedi... <laughs> what was that? The Sacred Jedi... <laughs> All right. So... It was an abort. That's what it was. We're going to start off with this guy. The fuck? Oh, yeah. So there is... There, there has been for a while a job of the hut. And Salacious Crumb, uh, Black Series figure uh, for the Return of the Jedi, obviously. But it was expensive. It was like almost 100 bucks on Hasbro Pulse. Wow. Until recently, where it went into their clearance section for half the price. Uh -huh. So I got it for 40 bucks. And, well, because it was half the price. Oh, hell. I obviously had to get a second one to open. So... Yeah, so Does it I come got, with a fucking uh, thing to sit on. I don't think so, which is bullshit. Um, yeah, it comes with this fucking like his hookah pipe and like the background of that, but it doesn't have like the actual platform that mm. the original toy came on, which is very disappointing. But we'll deal with that at another time. I'm sure Etsy or 3D printing or something will yeah. uh, will take care of that for us. But um, 
yeah and now that i've got this java and i'm gonna open one i'm like well i have to have like a whole fucking java's palace scene yes. you know i gotta have like two gamorian guards fucking bib fortuna i gotta have fucking leia and lando in their disguises right han and carbonite you know i gotta make a whole java's palace i agree thing here somewhere i gotta find space for it but yeah 100 percent. yeah dude i fucking i love it and uh, i did just check earlier today and these things are still on clearance right now on um hasbro pulse if you're looking for a job of the hut black series figure with the six inch scale um yeah so i what's slightly disappointing to me mm-hmm. is that it doesn't um it's scaled and posable for <laughs> you know, for realism to set up in a diorama, right? Mm-hmm. It's not like it, the figure was, like the original figure. Oh, yeah, which I had. When, when, you, when you turn the body, the fucking tail oh, would move. Oh, yeah, you turned his head and his tail. Yeah, like, yeah. shunk, 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 shunk. Yep. Like Java could ever move that well in, in fucking real life. Mm-hmm. Um, oh, I didn't even see Luke on here. But, yeah, we got a Luke also. But um, Well, I don't think Luke is. No, no, he's not part of the oh, thing. Okay. But that, that's another character i got to add to the collage. So I had one other thing, and this is something that I pre-ordered months ago, again, on Hasbro Pulse. And I actually love these figures with one uh, upsetting exception. So this is a two-pack of droids. It is a B1 battle droid and a super battle droid, but the B1 battle droid has a different head. It's got the head of a protocol droid, C-3PO. Oh, so this is like straight from episode two. Yeah, yeah. So that's uh, from the arena where C-3PO's head gets put onto a battle droid body, which... This is such a drag. uh, See, and that's the thing. Like, the bit started off funny. Like, right? Just C-3PO's head getting stuck on a fucking battle droid body. And then a battle droid head on fucking C-3PO's protocol droid body. That was funny. But then they just like they they couldn't just leave well enough alone, and then they had to do all those fucking cheesy ass C three PO like oh this is such a drag oh I'm quite beside myself it's like fuck George come on man well I don't know why they made his fucking head so dark yeah probably just like well there's some interesting weathering on the maybe that's why because it's it's got weathering on it yeah um yeah that's exactly why um but. And- the thing that pisses me off is, is they don't have a figure with fucking C-3PO's body and the battle droid head. I'm very upset about that, and I might have to make my own. Um, yeah. Because it feels incomplete. Like, it feels like that should have been the second figure and not the fucking yeah. uh, Die, Jedi. The super battle droid. What did I say? Um, yeah, I like the weathering, though, on the, the battle droid. Like, he gets, like, the dust from the arena. It's got oh, on yeah. it. Oh, yeah. That's, him, that's pretty good. You're talking the Super Battle Droid, right? Yeah. He's got all the sand all over him. Yeah. Yeah, that's fucking awesome. And it's actually on 3PO's head, too. Like, yeah. It has that same weathering. And, of course, I got a second one because, you know, got to open one. So, yeah. So, I got that. Again, pre-ordered that quite a long time ago. Nice. Um, But, yeah, I'm very upset that they don't have the Battle Droid head in C-3PO's body. Hopefully, they rectify that. Yes. But, wrecked uh, him. Dan near killed it, him. If they don't, then I will have to do it for them. So yeah, that's all of my Black Series figures uh, for this week. But I've got so many more pre-ordered, so many more eventually coming. It's it's yeah. I'm I'm looking forward to Java's Palace uh, opening up before us. Yes, and we'll just have to. Uh, yeah, we're gonna have to find the space to do the diorama. Yeah, might have to like take over that top shelf in front of the pops. I don't know. Anyway, we'll we'll deal with that later. So speaking of. Might move this, like make that the diorama because you can see it on camera better, and then we can move all that stuff. Yeah, yeah, we can. We'll, we'll figure it out. Yeah, yeah. Um. So yeah, speaking of things that I'm obsessed with, I am still like obsessing over Dune right now. Which, by the way, I picked up this. Dave's not looking, but I picked up. Oh, look at that! The book, and I've started reading the book already. Nice. Um. And it's already very interesting because it, I didn't realize it starts with that fucking Gom Jabbar scene with the fucking where she puts the needle and the hand in the box. Yeah, and it's pretty much right in, right in the beginning. Yeah, yeah. Like, it's literally right in the beginning. Like, there's a, at least a little bit of a lead up to it in the movie. But, yeah, they they jump right into it in the book. Yeah. So that's like chapter one. I'm like, whoa, okay. So we're just going to go right there. Well, I, yeah. 
because you know again i've got the movie for reference i've never read the book uh -huh. so and i'm i'm still watching the first movie like once a week in fact i just watched it again two nights ago that's awesome because i fuck i i gotta say i love the first movie like i've seen the second one twice uh both in imax which was great um but for some reason i still feel like the first one is a better movie okay i don't know why so like something about the first one really gets me but number two hits fucking digital uh video tomorrow oh no shit yeah so okay i'll be buying number two tomorrow nice um i don't i haven't bought the downloads for either of them yeah well see i i bought the blu-ray for dune uh, okay. a few weeks ago and that came with like a digital code okay um but the fucking blu-ray for part two doesn't come out until like july or some shit so i'm gonna end up buying it digitally for like 15 bucks and then again when the blu-ray comes out it's, it's whatever you know yeah i mean look you have your xbox x have a, a media player uh it? my ps5 does oh, okay there yeah. you go and that's what I was uh, watching on. But it's also attached to our Movies Anywhere account, so I can just watch it on any browser whenever I want. <laughs> <laughs> you okay, buddy? <laughs> uh, Dave does not quite grasp the uh, the controls of uh, of an Astromech I, droid. It, it was on here. Uh -huh. And I leaned on it. Oh. I, I put my arm down. <laughs> and RJ went flying, <laughs> crashed into a bunch of Black Series figures. <laughs> oh, I'm sure he's fine. Yeah. It's a good thing you don't taste very good. Oh, my God. <laughs> I fucking scared the shit out of me. What the fuck? Uh, is, he, is he still? Uh-oh. He's still on. Okay. All right. He still works. Yeah, it's, don't we keep the remote over there. Like literally, I put it down like this, and I don't know what I was just getting ready and to you do. Leaned on it. I just boom. leaned on it. Shoom! <laughs> he took and that was fast too. Oh my god. Anyway. Yeah. So yeah. So the the dude obsession continues. I'm reading the book. It's probably gonna it's probably gonna take me a couple of months to get through it because hey, you know. But I'd rather read the book than listen to an audio book of it, if that makes sense. Yeah, absolutely. Um. Yeah, because I want to get like the full experience, and uh, I think reading the book would be better. So, but yeah, my my Dune obsession continues. So oh, I love uh, it. I I foster every moment of that. Yeah. Now here's a question for you too, because I've been meaning to ask: How many of the books have you actually read? Because apparently there's a shitload of books. I've read the f like first five. Okay, like all the ones that were written by Frank Herbert himself. I think so. And because I guess his son and uh, Kevin Anderson took over. Um, did you get and, it? Uh, no, I think I missed it. Uh, and, and did a bunch of books. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, that I think were mostly prequels. Uh, and I wasn't sure if you had read any of those. Or... No, because. I mean, I'm. The first book is one of the best things ever written mm -hmm. in my mind. Those others ebb and flow in how good they are yeah like afterwards but don't don't compare okay right it it's nice to kind of continue the story and it does have like the first three especially like okay boom 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 like everything is happening chronologically mm -hmm. um but there's a pacing to the second and third books that is is just not good hmm. okay <laughs> so it's a cautionary tale. However, you know, once you read the first book and you'll get to parts in the first book where it's like, okay, I would highly recommend pressing on because your experience may differ. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Because you might pick up the story in a different way than I did. So probably. Yeah. Because I, again, cause I saw the movie before fact. reading the book um, and the fact that I love the movie. So, you know, there's going to be some biases in there, of course, but um yeah, I, I want to get through it. Here's the second one right here. Ah, Dune Messiah, yeah. yes. Which that's, they just greenlit uh, the movie for that. Warner yeah. Brothers uh, announced last week that they are indeed going to uh, begin production on Dune Messiah. No idea when that's going to happen because apparently the director has something else lined up that he might be doing before that, which is fine because I guess Messiah takes place like 10 years later. Yeah, and I don't think, I, just based on the way that the second 
Dune Part Two ended, mm-hmm. I'm not sure where they're going to pick up with Messiah. Like, I don't know if it's going to pick up the same timeline. Okay. Um, you'll see when you get through the book. You'll see. Okay. Um, but yeah, no, they uh, so they announced that they're definitely working on that one, which is good. And we've still got the prequel series coming out at the end of this year, which I'm very interested in. Good luck, Rick. Um, yes, good luck. And yeah, so that's that. Uh, and the last thing I have for my week, speaking of, uh, seeing things in IMAX interstellar, which we covered on the podcast last year, yeah. turns 10 this year and it is re-releasing an IMAX 70 millimeter oh, no uh, shit. in September. Yeah. Wow. So you can bet your ass. I'm going to be watching that because that's the one thing that I regretted about that movie was not seeing it in theaters after, you know, we covered it for the show. I'm like, oh, this would have been so awesome on IMAX. Yeah, we should. We should definitely make it a thing. Yeah. We'll go see it. Mm -hmm. Um, Even though we talked it to death on the show. Sure. We um, don't have to do it for the show. Yeah. We could just go and enjoy it. Yeah. So, but yeah, I'm definitely going to be doing that. So if you want in. Some um, of those scenes in in 70 millimeter, like when they're spinning. Oh, God. God. I couldn't imagine. (laughs) Oh, my God. They're like sitting in the fucking uh, the spinny chair. Yeah. Yeah. so yeah, but that's that's basically been my week since uh, last we recorded. Yeah. So, time for you to. Uh... I, I don't know. Did I do anything? I oh. didn't. Like... Well, you hinted at it earlier that you I did. Uh, did the eclipse. I did. I was going to try and play coy. Um, <laughs> yeah, we did uh, helmet fire and I. We we uh, we we did the we did the thing. We did the eclipse. Uh, those of you who got to watch the live stream, thank you. For doing that it was awesome um, it was good uh, it was better than looking at the clouds here in new jersey so right. so the what's really funny so the original plan was to go he's tired he's yeah you should be tired you took a hell of a fall there <laughs> um the original plan was to go out to the midwest yeah and um we started looking at the the models for what the forecast was going to be. Mm-hmm. And what's amazing about some of this modeling that they do, like you can look at a GFS model for weeks out and look at anticipated cloud cover mm-hmm. for those weeks. And when you start looking at that and you start seeing percentages of chance of where the, the cloud cover is going to be. Yeah. And the Midwest where we were going to be was starting to look really bad. Yeah. And, and apparently Texas was bad too, but ironically, like, so as we got closer to it, it, it got to, it got to a decision matrix, right? Where it was like, okay, we have to decide one way or the other. We, I think we decided on like a Thursday. It was like, all right, Thursday, we're going to decide Mm -hmm. like which way we're going to go. And just based on what the forecast was in the modeling, we're like, it's a ninety eight point nine percent chance of clear skies from, you know, New Hampshire to Maine. I like those odds. Yeah. <laughs> then out west, like over Indiana, like that area, there was a um by Janine Vickers, like by her place where we're talking about going, there was a opening in the in the cloud grouping in the modeling mm. that was like going to just go over like there is two z, like two z, z hours in increments right for the modeling mm-hmm. and the timing of this hole in this fucking weather system that would have made a clear area just happened to be maybe coming across there mm. so it was like so you're saying there's a chance <laughs> um but higher percentage you know won the day for that and I jumped into my Hilton app and, and grabbed a couple of hotel rooms. We still, cause we still left on the, with the same timing. We still left Saturday. Yeah. Went up Saturday, uh, stayed in a town called Bath. How uh, far was that drive or how long was the drive? It took us like a little over seven and a half okay. hours to I, get to Bath. All um, right. I wasn't sure if it was like an eight hour thing or like a 12 hour thing. Cause it's I up there. If we had gone straight all the way up there, it would have been probably closer to nine and a half, mm. ten hours. Yeah. But because we we stopped in Bath, which is you know 
in the, the southern area. Mm. Um, yeah, it, that kind of broke it up nicely. And we stopped at Portsmouth, got a picture of the lighthouse, like you do. It's yeah. Maine. Mm-hmm. Um, and then the, the real adventure began because... Um, <laughs> We uh we had a we had an incident with memory cards. Oh no! Yeah, and the said incident required potentially a uh, extra stop in the itinerary to see if we could procure <laughs> at a Best Buy. <laughs> yes, yes, and there's not very many Best Buys in Maine, by the by. I would imagine not. Um, I would imagine there's not a lot of anything up there. So there was two Best Buys. And in the whole state th- that were anywhere near us. Uh-huh. Um, so when we went into Google Maps and said, okay, Best Buy, the two showed up. Okay. So uh, there was one in Bangor, which is about 45 minutes away. So we're like, okay. Bangor, I hardly know her. <laughs> <laughs> so the next day, we drove out of Bath. Um, well, let me rewind. Discovered that we had a memory card issue. However, we hadn't looked through all of our gear. We had a truck full of gear. Pelican cases and fucking, uh, you know, bags and uh, totes and all. We had all this stuff, man. Mm -hmm. And all that shit had to go through. And we loaded all of it up and brought it into the hotel with us because we're, you know, you're talking thousands and thousands of dollars worth of shit. Yeah, you don't want your car broken into. Exactly. So, you know, and Vickers drove. We, we, uh. Drove his truckosaurus up there, thank God, because my car couldn't handle all that gear. Yeah, and so we we you know bed it down for the night, went through all the stuff, no joy. Um, so the next day, so is this a situation where it's like, all right, we got everything together. All right, where's the SD cards? Uh, I thought you brought the SD card. Oh, I thought you brought the SD card. So it it may or may not have been a like. When you you know how sometimes you take things out to and say like oh I'm gonna upload and clear all these out so that I, uh, I don't forget to do it uh huh and then you put them in a safe place and then you forget and then you forget where the safe place is <laughs> like kind of thing yeah so anyway before we left for for heading towards Bangor we um we actually. We stopped at the Bath Ironworks, where they build the ships. Oh, which was really fucking cool, man! Like that area, that that river, they have. I mean, they've been building ships there since the, you know, the 1600s. Mm-hmm. Are we talking military ships? Yeah, cargo ships, like destroyers. Okay, destroyers and cruisers. Nice. So they had like half a dozen of them in various states of of completion, like there in the docks, like being actively worked on oh shit so it, w- it was very cool to see something like that big like an active shipyard yeah like and i've been kind of into it lately because of the uss new jersey stuff and mm. um seeing like a, a a shipyard that's not active and then like kind of i'm not gonna lie like the seeing the battleship back in the in new jersey that fucking that man it's, i know it's driving me crazy um, seeing a battleship in the in a yard, getting going through dry dock, where it came from, like, wh- and when it was in its heyday, was so busy, had so many employees, and it was so active, mm-hmm. and it'd be so just kind of. It reminded me of what this country can do, yeah, as opposed to what it is doing. So yeah, that's a whole big discussion, right? But it's it's there. It's kind of in my heart, like as you know things do yeah so going up there and seeing that and seeing like hey this is this is what we do we're like we're fucking we're building we're building ships still yeah. we're still we're, we can still do this thing and it was pretty fucking cool and and the fact that it's in this deep ass river like it's pretty pretty far inland mm-hmm. and yeah they're build the ships and fucking send them out Really fucking cool. Nice. So saw all that. We drove up towards L.L. Bean Land um, with a deviation 
to uh to banger got some sd cards at the best buy mm-hmm. S- scratched the itch didn't satisfy all our like cf expresses of what we were looking for but th- apparently everyone and their fucking mother has turned into a photographer because best buy was wiped out like oh, of all really? their cameras and fucking sd uh, memory cards oh yeah dude it was fucking decimated <laughs> so but got what we needed and then uh Ended up spending the night in Ellsworth um, with an early wake up the next day to head up to Halton. Mm-hmm. And that, that that was Monday. That was the day of the eclipse. Drove up there. It was about like two and a half hours to get up there. And on the way, there's like the scenic overlook. And I think I had posted some of the pictures of like that with the mountain in the background. Yeah. Um, I forget the name of that mountain. Vickers will probably be able to tell you. Um uh the, 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 the. yeah he's telling stories in there oh yeah he's so, he's lighting up the chat for us thank you filling in the, he's filling in the gaps ladies <laughs> hey, hey! My, my feet is so smooth <laughs> so uh you know went to the sink out, overlook got up there and it was like probably i think it was like 8 eight thirty something like that mm-hmm. and found a spot to get set up at it was, and it's like kind of like kind of like tailgating at a Buffett show. You right. want to you want to find your own little corner, get yourself spread out so that nobody can really be around you. Mm. And you know, once you're in that spot, that's it. You're homesteaded. Boom! All right, yeah. here it is. What time did you get there in the morning? I think it was like eight thirty, nine o'clock. Okay, yeah. and then the eclipse didn't happen until like three thirty. Three thirty. Yeah, yeah. So we were yeah we were there all day. Did you um, like bring a barbecue? Like fucking cook a little? No, bit? I mean we had snacks. Uh, Snacks and Diet Cokes. It's all, it's all you need, man. Oh, yeah. Had some nuts, some Diet Cokes. That's what she said. <laughs> um, Speaking of Diet Coke, sidebar. Mm-hmm. Did you know that Lady Gaga did a video? Music video this is years ago. Everybody's like, yeah, dude, this, this happened like a fucking decade ago. Where she, like... You know, she always does like crazy outfits and stuff. Uh-huh. And then one of these, it was like Diet Coke cans in her hair. Like her hair was wrapped around a bunch. Of, they were like buns, but they were around Diet Coke cans. Was this for an ad? No, it was for one of her music videos from just, again from years ago. Just randomly Diet Coke. Yeah, yeah. Hey, hey, man, <laughs> Diet Coke. I I was tempted to take a screenshot and send it to you. I and I would have enjoyed it. Yeah, because it's Diet Coke. Mm-hmm. Diet Coke rules. But anyway, sidebar over. Uh. <laughs> Um, yeah, so like Helmet Fire saying, like, he his setup was fan fantastic, complicated. <laughs> <laughs> he he had, um, you know, he his stuff was hooked up, he had basically, I, I don't know, I, I don't even want to waste time describing like stuff that he had hooked up because i'm i'm not going to do it justice but he had uh one of his mirrorless cameras hooked up to a telescopic lens nice and then uh which had a, a viewfind like a um, a spotter kind of scope connected to a computer like it like almost like a raspberry pi device mm-hmm. that did internal computations that would basically do the tracking oh so that it, and it was on this big mount and then that mount would turn the whole thing. And he had like um, all these brackets that were holding like the batteries to to for the camera and everything else. It was an impressive fucking setup. Yeah, yeah. Um, what compared to mine, which was a fucking camera on a tripod. That was it. <laughs> uh, was it your phone that the live stream was? Yeah. Coming so from? so my phone did the live stream. Um, and honestly, it was kind of a last minute decision, like because yeah. I, I wasn't sure. I really wasn't sure how the the eclipse itself would show on the video. It was good. It was really good. Yeah, and I was I was really surprised. Yeah. Like when I watched it later, um, which I don't think I watched it till the next day. Mm-hmm. Um, I was really really surprised on how like visceral it was. Like, oh yeah, f- from the other side. But I will tell you. So you know, v- Vickers was he was finger banging that setup right up until the, the last <laughs> last minute um but once once he got it set up and got it on the computer all that stuff um was great my shit was just done manually um 
And I, you know what? As much as I covet, I love to have the Star Tracker and everything else because it's it's they take amazing pictures. Mm-hmm. Um, I think if I had that set up, I I'd still I still like having. The tough part for me is like I have a camera that's you're still looking through the fucking lens, mm-hmm. so I, I was had to be having extreme, uh, fucking eclipse glasses discipline, <laughs> and make sure that I wasn't fucking staring directly into the, into the fucking sun. Right. So I and I I did good. I did good. I did better than I usually do. <laughs> um, so I I I didn't win at the, uh, staring at the sun contest. But we we got to the point. I set up the live stream, and you know, about forty five minutes into the live stream is when the event happened. And look, you can you can gauge just by our reactions, like in the live stream, and the or or the lack of, like, kind of the reaction. I guess just because you were just engulfed in. Yeah, I I I literally forgot. I, d- I don't remember taking pictures. Like, it got to a point where it was like I was operating the camera mm. at a reflex. And then I realized, oh, shit, I have to make adjustments to the picture so that these pictures come out. Yeah. Um, Which I've seen some of your pictures post-production, and they look really good. Yeah, thanks. I, I'm i really happy, really surprised. Um, some of the ones Vickers grabs because his resolution's better than mine like some of the um the prominences when you see him unreal yeah but I, let me let me tell you the biggest takeaway i had from the whole eclipse the the moment it happened i was immediate like my immediate reaction was we don't know shit <laughs> like and and I, that's a very generic thing to say but that's that's what my thought was yeah and it was like we are infinitesimally small and early humans when they saw this wouldn't have had any fucking clue what the hell was going on yep like if you can imagine a th- you know 3000 years ago some fucking you know, farmer be bopping around, like maybe noticing that, that it's getting a little darker and that's kind of weird. Um, maybe noticing the animals around starting to act a little funnier. Mm-hmm. Um, but they don't, they're not staring into the sun constantly. They really wouldn't have any idea like that the sun is changing. Right. Because that's not something that they do. They don't stare into the sun. Otherwise they wouldn't live that long. Yeah. <laughs> so, the idea that like over a period of you know an hour a couple hours you know gradually getting darker and then all of a sudden this dark blue blanket of of just darkness starts pulling over like you see it and you just it starts pulling over and stars start coming out behind it as it's being pulled over yeah and then all of a sudden the sun goes away yeah and there's this black dot in the fucking sky like yeah could you fucking imagine like could you I'm imagine sure... and not having any idea like oh my fucking god like the world's ending or something like and you're looking up at this thing where the sun used to be like you even if you had some idea of like that the moon moves through the sky Mm -hmm. there was no moon like you didn't see the moon like it was it like it wasn't visible because it's a new moon so there was no moon that you could say oh like oh the moon must have intersected it or something if if you had even you know would have had the education for those thoughts Mm -hmm. it just the sun was there and then it wasn't right and you what you have is this fucking this black dot in the fucking sky the stars are suddenly coming out Mm-hmm. Everything around you is fucking acting weird. And when you turned around and looked around you, you it was like looking off into the sun had just recently set. Like if you can imagine you just watched the sunset and it's you know, it's dark, but there's still like some light where the sun was. Mm-hmm. It was like that 360 degrees around us. 
That's crazy. I described it in a video. It's like it like if you had taken a bowl of darkness and just put it on top of us. Mm -hmm. So looking all around you, it was this. There was light all around us, except for that one spot. Yeah. And that ISS image that uh, they posted, they they posted an image of us. We're underneath that fucking black shadow, that umbra of the moon. Yeah, like it's that's of our area. And we saw the fucking space station. Oh, did you? Yeah. So like you, you hear Vickers actually sees it. And I, I was, I didn't think it was the ISS because it, to me, it wasn't bright enough, uh -huh. but then duh, the fucking sun's being blocked out. <laughs> um, but we saw it go directly over. So we saw them make the pass that they fucking took the picture for. Oh, that's great. Yeah. It, it just absolutely fucking insane. Yeah. But in that moment, it was just. As, as I had the thoughts of this is man would have stood there and looked at this thing and gone, what the fuck just happened to my world mm -hmm. and panic everything you can imagine. And then all of a sudden it goes back to normal. Yeah. And then you're going to have to live the rest of your life with the fact that this thing just happened. Mm hmm. And so what's the takeaway, right? So what's the, what's the religious air quotes experience out of it? It's mm -hmm. the, the fact that something can happen that you don't have any control over because you, you don't, you don't know it's there. Yeah. Right. It could be fucking an eclipse. It could be cancer. It could be, fucking heart attack you don't know you don't know because you, you don't see it coming you can't control it yeah right control is an illusion <laughs> and i'm a big control guy man and so th this oh i know this fucks with me big time and it, I, i've been a mess ever since to be honest <laughs> um well I, yeah because I, I mean if you think about like you know, science and mathematics haven't been around for that long in in terms of like the our history. So we're still just scratching the surface on shit. Yeah, we're we still learning. We don't know shit about shit. Yeah, ninety ninety percent of the fucking ex of existence, we don't know what it is. We know that it it's out there. Yeah, you know, in dark matter and dark energy, and but we have no fucking idea what it is. Yeah. And I get it. I totally get it. But because it really what it comes down to is you got to control your controllables, right? Yeah. Really, that's all you can do. Like there's the things that there's things that you can control, right? You can control what you do. You can control how you react to things. Um, and that's always been part of my therapy, right? Has been uh, how I react to things, mm -hmm. as opposed to um, how, you know, whatever. That and if you are planning your life like, oh, in ten years when I retire, I'm going to do this, you're wasting your life. Yeah. Yep. Like, hey, I want to build a lightsaber. Make it happen. Mm -hmm. If you have the means, make it happen. Well, because, yeah, at the end of the day, you never know. Like, yeah. we, any of us could drop dead fucking tonight of yeah. a million different fucking things. Yeah. And so. you can't you can't live your life in fear of that. Like, that's the no. hard, that's the hardest part. But the reality is that when it happens, you have no control over it. Mm -hmm. So knowing that do what do what it is that you're going to do like don't 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 go like in my mind like this whole i've had this premise of of like well you know when i retire from this second job oh yeah i'm gonna I'm, i'll have these things lined up i've had those exact same thoughts yeah and it but you know at the same time it's like god what am i going to be like physically like because you know i'm falling apart now mm -hmm. what's What's everything going to be like? And it's like, God damn, you know, you something could change so, so fast. And honestly, I, I think because I was, I was with Helmet Fire, 
who you know is a cancer survivor. Yeah, I think that that kind of played into some of it. Um, not played into it like it like it's something frivolous. It was, you know, thinking about the whole seizing the day. Um, it's. I think it's important in our in the stage of our lives that we're in. It's important to that we don't just put things off until yeah you know, oh I, you know I'll be I'll be ready to do that in ten years or yeah. fifteen years. But will you? Yeah, that's the question. But will you be around for that? Yeah. Well, you know, well, waiting ten years, like, are you going to have the same experience? Are you, will you enjoy that experience? Yeah, like and, and, because because it's not going to cost any less money, right? Like uh, things are only going to get more expensive. Yeah, you know, there and you know what happens when there's another fucking COVID. Uh, talking to a coworker uh, whose son's getting ready to go to fucking his senior trip, his daughter, her entire senior year got ruined because of COVID. Yep, couldn't go on her senior trip. Graduation was a fucking mess, and it's affected her ability to like interact socially and everything else. Like it really affected her. Mm -hmm. Um, oh, yeah. Don't and, even get me started on all the COVID shit. Yeah. It, it something like that can happen and you, you, there ain't fuck all you can do about it. Yeah. So anyway, the eclipse was just part of that and it hit me way more than I thought it would. Hmm. The, I, I knew the mechanics of the eclipse. I knew what I was going to be looking for. You know, we, you know, Vickers and I both were like, okay, this is what's going to happen. Um, we, we had an app. You're just looking at it very methodically. Yeah. This yeah. is, this is the science of it. This is the pictures we want to get. This is what we're looking for. This is the timing of this. This is mm -hmm. when we're going to take filters off, you know, the app, you can hear it in the, in the background of the, the live stream. This is the app, uh, you know, it's telling us to take the filters off so we can get this picture. This is when these things are going to happen. So we're looking at it like, okay, here we're running the checklist, mm -hmm. right, for this mission, which got us all the way to that point, right? You know, we had a successful mission because of that. Yep. But the the moment of it, you can't. You, I, I I'm I say this as somebody who. I guess wasn't I was not prepared for having a moment, mm -hmm. and not everybody had a moment. I mean, some people saw and was like, "Oh, that's cool," and they went about their lives. Like, yeah. but and some people didn't, and you know, and that's not right or wrong one way or the other. But it, this is a once in a lifetime thing for me. You mm -hmm. know, I, I can see why people chase it because it's pre it's pretty fucking amazing. Yeah, but for things to happen the way they did right for us to have make the decision to do it fucking make the call to go where we knew it was going to be clear skies yeah to fucking get the timing to not only have the clear skies but a week after to have a nor'easter there where a lot of places were just coming back from not having power Oh shit! Right, so it could have been way worse if this had been a week before. There would have been snow all over the place. You wouldn't have even got up there. Yeah. So, the timing of everything to happen, and then like being there, being that moment, and boom, um, was pretty fucking remarkable. So it'll it'll be something I never forget. I'm I'm really really glad that the the live stream picked it up the way it did because, yeah. like I said, I watched the live stream. And why I watched the blue of the darkness come, you know, start coming over, and I see Venus pop out. Yes, I noticed that on the stream. That was the first yeah. thing I saw. Was a boom that one bright. Uh... Yeah, Venus like jumps out at you. Yeah, and then as the the blue cover of darkness like takes out the sun, and then all of a sudden it's just like there's even like a sound um, on the the recording of it which i th i think is just it might be a coincidence or it could be whatever the last thing i'll say about the eclipse before we move on to our main topic is <laughs> i have to pee um we the fact that i could look at the sun and see a fucking solar flare with the naked eye because we looked up and there was a, a prominence that you could literally see 
Was that at the bottom? Because I saw that in one of one of your guys' pictures. Yeah, bottom in, in the bottom right. Yeah, there, there was, was that solar flare you could see coming out. Yeah, um, one of the pre- people I follow, one of the astrophotographers I follow, had a, a even closer shot, like through a big telescope, and the estimate he gave for how big that was, fifty thousand kilometers. <laughs> So that thing was 50,000 kilometers tall, that arch of, of fire. Insane. Coming off of the sun. And to put that in perspective, the Earth is 12,000 kilometers in diameter. Mm-hmm. So throw yourself four Earths underneath that thing. Yeah. That's how big that was. And the fact that, you know, we saw that light eight seconds old. You'll I, And you'll never, like, you can't go outside and see a solar flare. You just can't. No. Like if you if you can, that that solar flare is so fucking big that you're probably going to die within moments of it. <laughs> like that's that is not a good sign. Yeah, eight minutes I think. Is yeah, that what the time yeah, is like, for light to get from the sun to here. Yeah, exactly. So it's going to be like, oh wow, look at that. <laughs> like, yeah, not good. Not good things are going to happen. Mm-hmm. But the fact that we could fucking see it, um, you know, you look at it, it's like, man, do you see that orange? Like that orange spot, like yeah, yeah, I see it. Like and you, that you're seeing with your own fucking eyeballs, not through the camera, not through binoculars, not through anything. You just see it with your own eyeballs. It just like that part alone. This this scientist in me is just like I, I, it's just dumbfounding. Yeah. So it it was worth every minute of it. Um, we stayed late, packed up our shit. We uh we drove to near a dark sky area because all the parks were closed, mm-hmm. um and took some astrophotography, uh, which was cool. But it meant we also got on the road at ten o'clock that night, and then we <laughs> drove through the night. Oh, shades of you and John driving up from uh, Florida. Yeah, uh, indeed. <laughs> uh, but I was much younger when we did that. Right. And. But we we entertained ourselves. Uh, there was no no napping or anything. Um, Mark, yeah, bird, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the we watched Rick and Morty. <laughs> we watched a lot of Rick and Morty uh, going down, mm. um, which is a whole nother thing. But yeah, we we fucking Vickers drove most of the way. I got us through the New York uh, early morning rush hour. Mm. traffic to get us to the other side of that and yeah by the time i got home i was a i was a fucking wreck oh i believe it it ended up being a a 29 hour duty day (sighs) yeah when's the last time i had a fucking 29 hour duty day it's been a while it's been a long time the last time i had one of those it involved a double ar oh yeah yeah remember those yeah so it was a long fucking day Mm. but it was worth it it was totally worth it um yeah so that's the story of that um i have pages of thoughts that i i've i've put into notes uh deeper deeper thoughts than uh, thoughts with dave martin yes and sometimes the deep thoughts are too deep apparently according to you know my wife and my therapist (laughs) but uh yeah it's uh it's pretty awesome. Good. Yeah. It uh it seemed like a great experience. It's a shame I wasn't able to uh you know do anything myself. But hey, there's the one in twenty years, so here's hoping. Yeah. Here's I, hoping my my ass is still alive then. Yeah. Honestly, like I could have rolled you up in a in a sack and you, you had some more time off. Yeah, that was the big thing yeah. is I, I have no time off right now with my job. So it's... Yeah, you would have to at least take it one day. Yeah. And and potentially two because I took like obviously I didn't go into work on Monday. Right. Um I didn't go in on Tuesday, obviously. And then I took Wednesday, thank God. Because you were still recovering by Wednesday, huh? I was still recovering by fucking Saturday. Oh, like shit. I was a, I was still like just I was feeling it. I was mm. I was like still hung over from it by Saturday. The, we're old, man. Yeah. We're, it, it, that is that is a ball buster. You know the fact that we can do it is one thing, but you have to you. It's time to pay the price <laughs> after it's done. 
So it's that whole Ian Malcolm quote from the first Jurassic Park. You know, you got so focused on if you could do it, you never thought about if you should. Oh no, the should was absolutely there, <laughs> totally. Uh... Oh yes, so uh, I brought this up with Jason, and we definitely I'll put a pin in this. Q Lunar Girl with pin, um, but the sidebar dark sky camping trip that we want to do this summer. Oh, okay. Remember we talked about this vaguely. Vaguely. Um. I did it early, so I made sure I caught you before fucking nap time or bedtime. <laughs> um, the yeah, more to follow. Okay, I, I I have to put more thought to it. I have to look to see where things are. I mean, obviously, the tough part with doing like astrophotography and dark sky and everything else is it's obviously weather dependent, right? Right. And we want to do it in the summer, so we're not freezing our fucking tits off. Also correct. Yeah. So. More to follow, but I have what I envision is finding a place to camp, getting renting, getting a couple of sites, throwing some tents down, getting some astrophotography, seeing some fucking amazing stars, and there there is certified dark side space in PA. Okay, so getting to those spots to do it and uh, and do it right. I haven't slept in a tent in. Many a year. Yeah. Well, you're going to learn today. <laughs> all right. So is that it? That's all I have. All right. Because, yeah, we got an hour to get through four episodes of The Bad Batch. Yeah, and so. I have to pee. All right. So, so all right. We're going to take a very quick break and then be back with The Bad Batch after this very quick word from our sponsors. The sacred Jedi. <laughs> <laughs> uh, not what I was expecting to hear. Still... I don't know. Like, there was something on the radar. But, uh, all right. Uh, Swedes Lake House. Yeah, I mean, that was that was actually a lot of fun that day that we spent at the uh, the lake house uh, doing the music video. Um, definitely should do something like that again. Uh, Cherry Hill State Park. Cherry something? Well, Cherry Hill is where I live, where I'm currently residing. So, I don't know if that's what it is. Oh, shit. Okay. Let's see if uh, there's anything else in the chat. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I saw um, somebody brought up the whole OJ thing. Yeah, fucking OJ's dead. I'm really hoping, I'm really hoping that, you know, he left a confession somewhere that somebody's going to fucking um, come across because, like, we all know he did it, right? Like, it's, come on. Come on, buddy. We know he fucking did it. It's just a matter of getting that confirmation. You know, I just I just want that fucking confirmation so bad. Um, but uh, yeah, yeah, it's, uh, you know, he's dead. And yeah, I mean, his the trial like overshadowed any accomplishments he had in football. Um, oh, that's right. OJ died. Yeah, yeah. Because I saw somebody mention it in the chat earlier. So I figured I'd fill some uh, some dead space with some OJ talk. The juice is dead. He is. <clears throat> but and I was just telling the people that I I hope they find a confession somewhere. Like I hope he fucking wrote a confession and then like put it in a safety deposit box or something that they're gonna come across. Because I just want the I we all know he killed her. Right. But I want that that proof. You know. Well, we had the proof. It was all in the trial. But, right. Yeah. Uh. All right. Ready. Yeah. So, Bad Batch, we have got four episodes to talk about. The last four episodes that have aired, episodes 9 through 12. Yep. And we're going to jump right into episode 9, The Harbinger. Harbing the Harbinger. Yeah. I've always, back when I was doing a Magic the Gathering podcast, many moons ago. There, there were several. There was, a, there was a card, a new card that had come out that we were talking about, and I was calling it the Harbinger of something. 
And that was my first experience with people listening who uh, like critique you after the fact. They're like, it's it's pronounced Harbinger. It's like, oh, it's my mistake. Mm. So, but yeah, the Harbinger. And uh, we're back on Pabu, where a lot of these uh, seem to take place recently. Right. And fucking Omega and Batcher are chilling. He goes into the, one of the fucking caves that are there. And oh, shit, there's a ship there. Right. Oh, boy. Where did this come from? Yeah. And... Ugh. Come to find out, it's Ventress. So this is the Ventress episode that we were teased, you know, during the uh, the trailers and everything. And uh, yeah, so she shows up, and um, you know, she comes across Omega. The fucking the bats show up, and they're like, "Who the fuck are you?" And uh, she basically explains the whole M count. Yeah, you know, we it's it's the big M count revelation that we all knew. Right. But now the batch knows what it is. They know that the M count is reference to midichlorians, which, you know, is reference to how force sensitive someone can be. Right. And um, you know, so through this, she basically decides to put Omega through a series of tests because they wanna, you know, test to see if she really is Which where the fuck did she come up with these tests? Yeah. Like, these are the most arbitrary tests. Like, okay, I want like, you to walk on this balance beam. Well, okay. But to be fair, it does have a lot of shades of, like, Luke and Yoda when he's, like, doing the fucking one-handed stand and he's floating the rock and all that. You know, she's got the fucking rock on her head. She's balancing on one foot. <sighs> okay. All right. I'll... I'll because think about it i'll allow it because i didn't think of that du dooku was yoda's padawan and dooku trained ventress yeah so what else does she know yeah still dumb though it was yeah. still like it was like really like i feel like you're just making shit up right just to keep the keep things going mm -hmm. like, uh, all right go well yeah because we had to fill the whole grab episode. that yeah because we had to fill this whole episode and it was all here in this fucking cave on Pabu where uh, all this shit's taking place. Um, Could have just had a whole episode of Ventress just fighting those guys yeah. and killing one of them. <laughs> yeah. She well, should have killed one of them. And, you know, what's interesting, too, is there is zero mention of, you know, what the fuck happened to her to get her to this point where she's right. alive again, which we, you right. know, we talked about the book, the Dark Disciple book, and where right. she dies... But she does make that one comment. The nine lives. That, that like talk about like she it, it's basically like, okay, I'm gonna scratch that itch for those of you who are talking about it. Yeah, like, yeah. Oh uh, yeah. Many one of our many lives or whatever. Yeah, she's like, I've still got many lives left or yeah, something like, like that. Oh, uh, come on. <laughs> that's that's what you're gonna give us. Yeah. So if we thought we were gonna get any kind of revelation about her resurrection in this episode, it it was not to be. I was cheeky as shit. Oh yeah, yeah. What, which is fine. Yeah. I, I honestly, at the end of the day, I don't have a problem with it. I I'm, thought it was it was very cheeky. Oh yeah, and... yeah. I'm sure that was a felony bit too. I'm oh, sure I'm he sure. threw that in there because he. I think he loves fucking with the fan base. Yeah, you know, absolutely. Just friendly, you know, fucking with. You know, he was one of us. Yeah. So he he knows. Yeah. He, he knows how how we'll react, and he he takes advantage of it. Mm -hmm. Um. During one of. Omega's tests where she's got to run to the top of the fucking. Arbinger. The t <laughs> were you getting the pronunciation? Harbinger. Yeah, Harbinger. Harbinger. Yeah, not Harbinger. I used to call it Harbinger, but anyway. So yeah, she's got to run up to the top of the fucking mountain and get a fucking branch from a tree, because um, again, that really tests your force uh, right. abilities. And while she's doing that, that's when we get Ventress versus the Batch, right? Uh, a little bit. And I, her new saber was interesting because it's got the curved hilt, very Dooku like, right? And it's yellow, so you know one of the first yellow sabers we've seen, you know, in current Star Wars canon. I mean, we've seen rays, right? But that, but I think that's again, Filoni knows that when we see that, we're going to associate that with a basically a. Um, not a fallen Jedi, but a Jedi who has separated itself him him or herself from the Order. Yeah, right. It's like okay, I'm I'm on my own side now, and here's my yellow blade. Yeah, yeah. Like I and I thought it was a very deliberate thing. Like okay, no, this is 
this this blade is is my own i'm on my own side yeah yeah it's very distinct but i think yeah. you know obviously the the curved hilt very dooku like she, right and it's probably something she got from dooku either right. like how to build it la that way or do you think do you think that that lightsaber is already out like do you think if we went into the <laughs> for the black uh, series yeah um, well i don't know if the black series but well i, I guess the what are those sabers that they have in the shop? Those are like the the fancy, the high dollar. I yeah. think they're Black Series. Maybe not. Maybe there are some other super special. I think they're the super, super. Yeah, th those are the ones that Bob Healy buys. Yeah. Um, super, super ones. But I'm sure it's coming. If it's not here yet, then it will be at some point. My penis is smooth. Because, you know, the, with this episode, they left the door open, too, for more Ventress adventures because she's just alive we just know she's alive now and she's yeah. just out there bounty hunting but will we see her again there's no fucking way they don't bring her back in some capacity in either a novel or another show or something like there's no fucking way that they're not going to give us more of her because they went through this whole process of fucking resurrecting her off screen um i i don't think they do you don't think I, so you think this is the last we're gonna see a ventress yeah i i, I think they, br they they brought her out as a bit and they fucking they're letting her roll no fucking way there's no fucking way where where right else would you where is she going to rescue fucking is she going to come to the, the save the day and rescue omega <laughs> like what's 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 the pundits say about that like, well it, I, I don't think we're gonna see her again in the bad batch um but see i think her in what then we're gonna see her in something there's no fucking way and first of all they have to tell us how she got fucking resurrected by the death of miri magic so there's probably gonna be another book or something i guarantee you this is not the last we're gonna see of Ventress. i i don't think that they're gonna do shit i think this was a like ha, ha. <laughs> that, this was a like uh i'm we're just gonna everyone likes Ventress. we're just gonna bring her back for half a second and then uh yeah, you missed. It's over there. Yeah. Um yeah, I don't I don't think so. I if we didn't already have a board bet, then I would be I like throwing down for another one because But I I this referencing the board bet, I really thought that Ventress should have fucking killed one of them. <laughs> like honestly, I and this is going to be a theme of the next f four episodes that we talk about. Right. Because they need to start dying off. <laughs> like there's all these almost like almost deads like for wrecker in a in, in a couple episodes yeah like yeah. just just fucking die like you, he's gonna have to die anyway just now's a good time mm -hmm. and no he still fucking lives like god damn it just <laughs> they all have to die like i'm telling you stop wishing that oh no they'll live on they'll they'll go to someplace else and they'll live lives and fucking you know make babies and shit no no everyone has to die they <laughs> cannot live all right everyone must die okay well we shall see um oh let me get the baby killer it's more appropriate <laughs> uh so you know all of this happens omega doesn't really pass any of these tests i mean she got the fucking branch down but really no nothing that she did showed any kind no. of force potential no at all Right, so they know she has the M count, but she's not actually using the fucking force. She's, you know, it, she was showing no ability. Right. Um, so I almost feel like we're getting another Sabine situation here where she's going to be trying and trying and trying, and then at the fucking very end, she's going to all like, oh, you know, force grab something. And I, yeah, I mean, they they could very well do that. They've, they've done to us before, right? But mm. I, I don't think so. I think because she's a clone, I think that has a lot more to do with it. Okay. Like the reason that she fits in this puzzle better, like, and puzzle being the operative word, because uh, what's this nuts uses it at the end. Right, right, right. And, yeah. One of in, the later episodes. Um, in Juggernaut. Mm -hmm. I think that the, the clone genetics with the M count are why it works. Mm. And not because, like, is she trainable? Maybe. But I don't think that's the reason why any of this happens. Because again, I don't think she lives through this. Yeah. I think, you know, there's going to be some self sacrifice or whatever, but, you know, we'll, we'll, we'll get to that. Yeah. 
But I mean, honestly, not a whole lot happened in this episode. I mean, we got the Ventress. She fought the Batch for a little bit. Nobody died. Um, Omega didn't show any force potential. Uh, really, the only thing that this did was show us Ventress and basically explain to the clones what the fucking force is, what the M count is, and that's why they're right. after Omega. So, so this was all a fucking ploy for Filoni to show us Ventress and then never show us her again. Mm -hmm. <laughs> we'll see. We'll see about that. Um, so, yeah, that was I mean, it wasn't a bad episode. Don't get me wrong, but uh, it was fine. I enjoyed I enjoyed Ventress kicking the fucking batch's ass. <laughs> yeah, like, I because she obviously could have annihilated all of them. Mm -hmm. but, you know, if you're going to bring her back, you know, show her like she was she was a fucking badass. Oh, up yeah, and we know up until the end. So, yeah, there's no reason for her not to be. Yep. Um, How did I break Lunar Girl's heart into little pieces? What did I say? Anyway, uh, moving on to the next episode. Identity Crisis. So this one is almost all about fucking Emery back on Tantus. Right. So it starts off on some fucking random planet where... Um, like this little fucking furry baby, you know, somebody notices that this little fucking crying furry baby, like tossed something with the force and they fucking rolled over on her. Right. Like, um, Oh God. Nah, I won't make a, any Holocaust references. No, but, that's uh, that, that <laughs> it, that's a good call, Jason. That that's what got Gina Carano in trouble in the first place. <laughs> but, uh, but yeah, no, this dude fucking turned over on this fucking little baby and uh fucking Cad Bane shows up. Right to uh to steal the fucking baby which you right. know we knew he was alive during this time so it wasn't a surprise speaking of sidebar did you see uh swede's new tattoo i did not he got another one his cad bane tattoo oh no i didn't yeah, see it yeah yeah you, you need to check out his instagram oh shit okay yeah, yeah uh, i've been or facebook i've been staying off a lot of social media lately so which is a good call but yeah, yeah you should uh you should check that out okay oh good to know um, so anyway, back on Tantus, uh, so Emery is there with Hemlock, right? And just like, all of a sudden she's like, I want to be the, the chief scientist. I want to be in charge. Now that you've like locked up Nala say, I think I'm the one who should be that. And Hemlock, you know, he's like, okay, fuck it. You know, you, I'll yeah. immediately promote you, raise your security clearance. Right. You're now top secret SCI, and, you know? And that's, he might as well have said, fuck it. Yeah. Like he literally is just like, ah, whatever. Yeah. Yeah. Like it's almost, he is almost the science at this point is irrelevant. Like yeah. they just need this piece. They need Omega. Yeah. Like the rest of it, who gives a shit? Mm -hmm. Like the, the mixing and the fucking, you know, taking samples and everything else. Like, sure. Go ahead. Ha have at it. Yeah. Like none of that's important right now. We need Omega. So that's what he's focused on. So her taking over the, the lab, he doesn't give a shit. Right. Um, but uh, yeah, no, he just immediately promotes her, like updates her security clearance, you know, all, yep. all is well. And then he takes her into the vault, which, I mean, I don't know if you were thinking the same thing. My thought was at the end of this fucking force field uh, hallway, the vault, I was expecting to see like some fucking Palpatine clones, you know, naked Palpatine in a fucking jar. Right. Like, you know, Snoke, you know yeah, like, yeah, that. yeah. I was, that's what I was expecting to see at the end of this fucking, uh, hallway. But instead it's a bunch of force sensitive. It's a kids. daycare. Yeah. It's, it's <laughs> pretty a, much. It's a fucking really like awkward daycare. Right. Um, and it was, uh, you know, she was kind of surprised, uh, cause this is not what I was expecting to see. And it wasn't what she was expecting either. Uh, and she even asked this, this is where things get really dark. She asks him, well, why children? Couldn't we get adults, you know, who can, who could serve the same purpose? And Hemlock's response was, uh, there are a few adults left with such characteristics referring to the purge and how all the Jedi are fucking, yep. you know, dead at this point or being hunted. So yeah, yeah that was, uh, that was pretty dark. Um, Darker. We need darker. Yeah. Darker, more intense. Yeah. And you know what? <laughs> I, I think I even wrote during, I think it was this episode. Hold on. Oh, maybe it was. No, no, no. I think it was the next episode. But yeah, I feel like starting with this episode, like the tone does get darker. You know, um, I mean, they're all fucking... the way up until the Wanda Sykes shows up again. All oh, right. Yeah. Don't even get me started on that. But we um, will next episode. Yeah. So we know that these kids are all force sensitive. Uh, and this green skin kid, he's, you could see he was been wanting to break out. He's like, you know, 
observing right. eyeball and, and everything. Yeah. He kind of looks like, um, oh fuck. I had, I had it in my brain. It, it um, one of the cartoons he was, uh, it was a superhero cartoon. Oh, you know what um, I'm ta- thinking about? I think so. Yeah. He had that look. Yeah. But anyway, Beast Boy. <laughs> um, Maybe. That's what Bronco Fett said in the chat. Maybe. Anyway, uh, so yeah, he tries to escape. They fucking, pew, pew, you know, they fucking uh, take him down. Right. And, and uh, she's like, no, I have this handled. Right. And they're like, yeah, no, no, you don't. Yeah. <laughs> so it was interesting seeing a kid get shot. He, he was just stunned, but still. Yeah. Right. Uh, like, fuck your kids. Right. Exactly. Um, oh, yeah. No, this is where I wrote. This has a very disturbing and or like soundtrack. Like when we're inside of Tantus, inside the lab and everything. And, she, you know, uh, Emery's going around testing blood, mm-hmm. dealing with kids. It's like a very dark soundtrack. Yeah. You know, it's it's it yeah, very ominous yeah yeah exactly we're using your blood for bad things yeah and i wrote it's like a very andor like soundtrack yes um darker more intense mm -hmm. uh then emery goes up to nala say and um she had a very interesting conversation with her because we don't really know much about emery right you know apparently we know she's a clone right but we don't know shit about shit besides that so she's having this conversation with nala say and She's like, they're children, like I was. Um, and were you, do you plan to discard them too, the way you discarded me? And I'm just like, what the fuck is she talking about? So apparently there's some sort of history there with Emery. Right. And, and Well, I mean, Omega is the one that got to stick around and, you know, be one of the, one of the golden children. Right? Yeah. So do you think maybe Emery had some of that? uh m count in her blood too but then it wouldn't like jive with the rest i don't think she did i think that's why she's in this fucking lab okay i think like i think she was a a clone that ended up in the in the fucking laboratory yeah because when they were doing the experiments yeah she was she was part of a batch that ended up in the in the fucking labs right it's a, they had these other kids in these other labs we saw it in the other episode right where yeah. they had like the the fucking lost boys uh-huh. episode yeah it kind yeah. of alluded to the fact that there were other testing sites so she could very well have been like okay here's this this female clone mm. or whatever maybe they were running a train on her who, who the fuck knows <laughs> but that I maybe mean, that's why she walks that way but put her in a lab somewhere and then you know maybe because she's smarter than the other clones she's got that yeah. same fucking get up that uh uh brown eyes had yeah the the, the goggles yeah and... the, with the with the goggles and everything yeah she got that the, the what is the apple thing that they just came out with the apple fucking vision or apple yeah i think apple vision <laughs> which by the way that fucking i saw some uh screenshots of people that were watching the masters uh-huh. with those things on and they had like multiple screens up watching different uh, holes of the masters and then had like the leaderboard and then had like all this data. I'm like, Oh my fucking God, that, that would just, I, that's the future they want, man. That's, that's the future. That no, these that's the future want. we've been promised since the fucking 1980. Yeah. Where it's, it's that fucking uh, ready player one where we all just live in a fucking virtual universe and, Dude, if you get that built into this fucking like this size where I can walk around and have that overlaid. When I was a kid, like in my nerdy loner self, walking home from school after having a, a full day of being bullied for being weird mm-hmm. and just walking home from school and pretending that I had that fucking you know, like the, a like that, a HUD, like a yeah. heads up display on your uh, your yeah. glasses. Yeah, yeah, Terminator style. It's coming, man. I was gonna, I was gonna fucking find all the people that I, that pissed me off and and, <laughs> and terminate them. Wow, I had issues. Well, thankfully Dave didn't shoot up his school. Um, it wouldn't have been that. I mean, I just I was bullied, but I wasn't fucking. Well, no, I'm I'm right there with you on that. Uh, so something else too that I noticed, like we talked about this before, and when we were talking about previous episodes. 
Emery's not the only female scientist person right. walking around. And there's other like redheaded chicks with the exact same it's hair. This, it, it's, it's a cut and paste. Yeah. It's a cut and paste of the fucking thing. Because there's a not after Omega turns stuff in, spoiler alert. Um, and sh they're like um, fucking Holly Bush or Hemlock or whatever fuck his name is. Hemlock, yeah. Uh, when they're walking in the hallway, like one of those redheaded clones yeah she's got to be another clone like, like that's is walking by and omega doesn't even acknowledge her right i'm like wait a minute wasn't that fucking the broad and no. then they walk into the room and there's the broad yeah i'm like uh i think we just saw like it's like having a stage hand in the background like, right i think they just cut and pasted the wrong fucking you scene think that's in the background what, yeah you oh, think yeah, it's 100%. that as opposed to like they're just being this this group of these female clones all working in this oh uh, i don't i mean i just there's other scientists like I think there's female scientists. I don't know if they're all clones. Well, I mean, we haven't I, really gotten a good close up of any of them, really. We got it, uh, a couple episodes ago when they first got into the vault. Um, there was when like Palpatine a, came. Yeah, there was in that overhead. Uh, they showed the space like in that fucking room above. Mm -hmm. I thought there was some female scientists that were up there. Yeah, I could be wrong, but yeah, I, I don't know that all the female it's it's that. It's that all the, you know, all of your uh, goddamn Rodinians <laughs> are all fucking bounty hunters, right? Like uh, right. every every female we see in this in the same getup as a clone. Well, I mean, Re but it, it, I think that that was a cut and paste. I think we're, they're running this background image, and it was probably her in the background image. Okay. And they just it, it just goofed. Okay, it was more of an editing problem. Than that's anything. that's what I think. All right, fair enough. Uh, at the end of this conversation she has with Nalase, um, again to kind of make me think like maybe she does have some sort of M count. She's like telling um, Nalase like, "There's nothing I can do for these kids. You know, I don't have that kind of power." Yeah, fuck your kids. And well, but she specifically said, "I don't have that kind of power." And Nalase is like, "Don't you?" Like, is she talking about just like the power to break them out or some sort of other power? Maybe I I took that as like position power. That's what I took that as. Yeah, like to to use a you know leadership stupid triple C analogy. Okay, I I I took that as as she's in position power now with the lab and everything else. Like she has the access. Yeah, to be able to do something about it. Okay, fair enough. She just has to have the desire to do it right which you know by the end she's going to like she's, she's going to do something like you know but she will also die because probably. she's a clone yeah and she's going to die a horrible horrible death i hope vader rips her in half <laughs> just like <laughs> the clones have used you to the point of no return i will destroy you and just rips her in half okay the lightsaber Fair enough. straight up like through her like kebab style uh so after this hemlock gets a phone call from uh tarkin right so tarkin calls him up and he's like yo what's with the, all these extra funding you're requesting right like and he's playing the emperor card the whole time oh this is important to the emperor yeah. empire stuff lots of empire stuff happening. yeah and uh he even told tarkin like ah you don't have the clearance to uh to know what the fuck we're doing right so he's just, just 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 give me the money just give me the money and that's that's all i need from you yeah, because you know Tarkin has his own side plans. Yeah, well, I mean, he's got his own power plays to make. Yeah, the Death Star is currently being built. Right. You know, so Tarkin's got that that he's dealing with, and I, I need like you're funneling money that I'm funneling. Right. Like, there can only be so much funnel. Right. <laughs> I'm trying to fucking funnel money. Yep. Uh, so that was an interesting uh, conversation because Hemlock kind of like had all of the uh, all the power in that dynamic because he's got you know the emperor's fucking yeah but you notice he had to fucking he had to jump too when the it was like okay Mo, the moff tarkin is uh is calling yeah like, ah shit i gotta <laughs> i gotta take that you but know. at the same time he he didn't give him anything he no. you know well, he, like uh, you said he's he's got the emperor uh trump card yep uh and then he immediately calls the uh the assassin clone that we've been seeing all season, which, right. you know, people are now referring to as the Winter Soldier uh, <laughs> in reference to the Captain America thing. Dude, I, so this particular moment, it, again, it had this J like Jason Bourne style fucking yeah. um, like activate them all. Like it, th this this mentality of 
like, yes, do it. Do your, do your fucking job. You. Well, yeah, because he already is like, are you sure you can do it? Because you've already fucked up twice. Right. You know? And the guy's like, yeah, 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 I got it. So uh, uh, then fucking we get to where Cad Bane actually delivers the furry baby to Emery. Uh, she's asking all kinds of questions, and Cad Bane had a clever response to all that. He's like, you know, asking questions like that really kind of tips your hand or really gives, you know. Right, that you don't, that you're you're either you're thinking about things that you're not supposed to be thinking or you don't know shit. Right. Uh, and then we go back to Tantus where we find out that the green skin kid, uh, has been put into solitary confinement for 48 right. hours, uh, for his, uh, defiance. Uh, and then all Should the- be like a great escape scene. Ever see that movie? The great escape. No. Are you familiar with the scene though, where they, they he's like, he has the ball, like he's got a baseball glove and a ball and he's bouncing it off the wall. No. Okay, never mind then. <laughs> Sorry. Be completely lost on you. Yeah. And the episode ends with Emery. Apparently, she kept Omega's little fucking stuffed doll that she made while Omega right. was trapped there. And then she gives it to one of the other little kids. And like, right. Oh, I, I did a good thing. I right. gave him, I gave him a toy. I feel better. Yeah. <laughs> I feel better about it. Yeah. Before they all fucking die a horrible death. Right. At least you can feel, feel good about this. Mm-hmm. And, and then they, they all get murdered well we don't know that for sure no spoilers <laughs> oh dude I'm telling you everyone has to everyone has to die there's no way that papa palpatine's fucking plan works without all of these all this collateral damage disappearing yeah i mean you're not wrong but we'll we'll see how it all unfolds. Anyway, moving on to episode uh, eleven, point of no return. Right. Not to be confused with the uh, Bridget Fonda movie. Right. Bridget Fonda was in that. I don't fucking return? that. Uh, yeah, yeah. You don't know the Great Escape, but you know that fucking. Well, I saw that movie in theaters when it came out. Saw it at the drive-in. Yeah. Good times. Uh, and we start off with our with our girl Wanda Sykes is back. Oh, uh, she's uh, you know apparently at the uh, what's the FBO on some fucking random planet. Right, it charges her sixteen hundred credits for a uh, fuel stop. Right, but uh, while she's there, the fucking the assassin clone sneaks onto her ship, steals some data, uh, basically you know about where fucking Pabu is. Mm-hmm. Essentially, that's what the the data is that that. Uh, he gets and then we go to Pabu apparently now everybody in fucking town knows who Batcher is because he's just walking around the fucking marketplace and right. lady gives him a, a some food oh yeah. there you go Batcher local celebrity yeah because they've never seen fucking tiny dinosaur dog before <laughs> yeah but yeah apparently everybody in town knows him now and then uh I guess the batch has decided to leave Pabu because it's too dangerous so Omega and her little gay friend are saying goodbye you know, they're having this, like, touchy-feely moment where she's about to leave, and she's leaving, like, fucking text goggles as a, a reminder. I don't know. Some sort of shrine. I don't know. I, I don't know. Yeah, it, it was like, it was dumb. But Here's you, this, and then this, and, like, you'll always have this to remember. Yeah. And during this, the fucking assassin shows up on Pabu, and he's in that sweet-ass... Uh, ship again that right. like triangular fucking uh yeah the dark wing glider or whatever yeah, the fuck it is yeah, yeah. I, I love that ship um we need lego of that ship oh honestly. yeah i'm pff, there's there, got i bet you there's a mock out there i just oh yeah if i have enough black pieces it just needs to be built yeah <laughs> um and he fucking at one point you know he destroys the fucking batch of ships so there there you go first big casualty is yeah. uh, is their fucking ship? Yeah, I was, uh, dude. I was actually like, everyone dies. Yeah, right. This is <laughs> this is like validation for me that there is no, there's nothing sacred. Like, <laughs> right. oh yeah, the ship that they've been in for this whole time, yeah. dead. All these seasons, like I think that's the same ship that they had even in that yeah. last season of Clone Wars. Gone. Yeah done yep now guess what you don't have a ship yeah and it fucking almost took record down with it yeah um yeah he should have died yeah he should have died like no all joking aside well lots of joking mm-hmm. my, my penis is so smooth. <laughs> he's he should have died like, uh, he's like oh he's still unconscious dead 
Right. Brain dead, do whatever, fucking zombie them, do what fucking missed opportunity here. Yeah, yeah. Everyone must die. Well, you know, we still got time. Uh, we get this fucking badass shot. This is like one of my favorite shots of the whole fucking series is, you know, the fucking ship blows up. They, uh, the, the fucking Lost Boys, those three clones are still on Pabu. They, they showed up and, you know, Hunter is like, fucking go do this and this and, you know, get indoors. And you see this like undershot of Hunter's face and you can see the, the hill of the, of Pabu in the background. Uh -huh. And then you see the, whoo, the fucking empire show up. Yeah. And it was Whoop. this just awesome fucking scene with the soundtrack and the fucking ship coming in. Yeah. Oh, it was so it's good. like bad shit is happening. Yeah. Right. It's that sequence where it's like, you know, in Galaxy Quest, when like everyone's like dying because it's like Tim Allen fucked everything up mm -hmm. and then he has to go hit the, the fucking bar, the button. Yeah. That rewinds everything. Mm -hmm. That's. That's a horrible analogy, and I don't know why that's the one that came to my mind. But yeah, it's like everything like, goes to slow motion, and just like, oh fuck, all these people are 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 getting getting wrecked. Yes, yeah, they because yeah, the Empire shows up in full force on fucking Pabu, lands you know hundreds of fucking troops uh, between again stormtroopers and uh, clones like uh, right. the fucking uh, commandos, Republic, Republic Command commandos, yeah. And they're like just you know ransacking the whole fucking city looking for Omega, um, and they're still using those Clone Wars era style cruisers because it wasn't a Star Destroyer that came up. It was still one of those, uh, I, I, yeah, yeah, one of those class of ships. So I thought that was kind of cool too. And again, it's this, it's showing you this this transition phase, yeah, right, where we're going from clones to stormtroopers, from the old ships to the new ships. One ship, two ship, red ship, Three blue ship. ship. Something like that. Uh, you know, they're searching door to door. Uh, <laughs> and Hunter, like, jumps on one of their fucking shuttles, right? Because they've still got those fucking, uh, the landers that they used in um, Attack of the Clones. Right. With the two ball fucking uh, guns on them. And Hunter jumps on one of those, and he's trying to steal it. The pilot's like, fuck, he's got the ship, or he's, he's about to take over the ship. I can't do anything. So the assassin just... What the fuck was that? Uh, I don't know if you guys on camera saw, but fucking RJ just moved. The fucking remote is here. It was sitting over here, nothing touching it. And he just moved towards Dave. I think he's pissed about earlier. <laughs> is he even turned on? Uh, no, he's not. I just pushed the button. Oh, I know. I, I, I turned think, him on earlier. I think he's got a bit of a short circuit going on, honestly. Again, because of his fall. <laughs> that was fucking weird yeah i saw the movement and i'm like what is happening right now yeah no i caught that out of the corner of my eye i'm like uh you just move forward for no reason <laughs> uh okay so yeah hunter's trying to steal this ship and what the fucking assassin clone does is he just shoots the fucking pilot like he just kills the goddamn pilot right. so the plane will fucking crash which yeah. is a sick move fucking awesome yeah yeah, this is this is the shit. This is the this is like okay, all bets are off. Yeah, right. This 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 is a this is the no fail mission, right? And yep, because it's all about getting Omega back. Yep, that's she's vital to the Emperor's this, plans. So. And this guy is going to do whatever it takes. Yeah, and that includes like all right, that that stormtrooper's got to go. This guy's got to go. Whatever it takes. Yeah, and you're uh, making me uncomfortable. You need to back it, <laughs> back it the fuck up. <laughs> That's hilarious. So, I just took my five nighttime pills. I do. I'm Fucking right there with you. Fish oil, vitamin D, my crazy pills, my uh, statin for my cholesterol. Mm -hmm. Yeah, good shit. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, uh, so Omega and uh, Crosshair are off, like, tending to the, the body of fucking Wrecker. And this is when Omega decides to give herself up. She's like, they're going to destroy this whole fucking city. Like, everything's going to go to shit. But if I give myself up now, maybe this can lead to us, um, you know, finding uh, the location of Tannis. Because she's like, well, I'll put a fucking tracker on. And you, she's telling Crosshair, you can shoot a fucking tracker onto the ship as it's leaving. Right. And 
you know, after some arguing, uh, he agrees. Now, <laughs> when she turns herself in, right, they kind of, they just like, they scan her with like a, you know, like fucking tricorder or something. And, you know, they're like, bloop, bloop. And she's like, all right, give me the tracker. And she pulls it out of her pocket. But I'm like, so I, I had this whole like sequence of thoughts. Right. Because I'm like, well, fuck, I, I just assumed she was doing the old. Oh, I got two trackers on me. Right? right. I'll give you the one, but I still got this other one in my pocket. Right, right. Exactly. So I'm sitting there thinking like, you need to fucking like actually search her. But then I'm thinking like, oh, you know what? This guy's probably thinking he's like, I'm in like unfriendly territory. You know, one of these assholes has probably got a, a, a cell phone cam and they're going to get pictures of me patting down this fucking 10 year old girl. <laughs> and they're going to be like, oh, fucking look, look what they're doing. They're, they're he's molesting. On, he's on TMZ that <laughs> night. Yeah. He's like, I don't fucking need that right now at this stage of my career. You know, so just fucking just put the scanner next to her and we'll call that good. Whoop, whoop. Yeah, I don't want to. Yeah, I don't want to be accused of touching little girls or anything. So, oh God, that's really funny. <laughs> But that's like the sequence of thoughts that are going right. through my head this as I'm watching this. Too. <laughs> yep. Um, and then, yeah, he puts her in his fucking badass shuttle and and they're gone. And that's it. Like some solemn music plays as she's fucking yeah. sitting in there in the shuttle getting taken back to Tannis. Which. I mean, I guess it worked like yeah. her plan worked. He, you know, homeboy was like, all right, we got her. Let's go pack yeah. it up. Yeah, we're, yeah. We're fucking... but of course, Crosshair couldn't hit the uh, couldn't hit the fucking shuttle with his tracker because his hand was fucking shaky. And I knew that was going to come into play somewhere. Um, well, I, it, not only was he fucking shaking McShakerson, but he also was like, I don't think it had the range. Like, then it falls oh, yeah, short, it well short. Also, I don't know. He could have put a good arch on it and just I don't. Know. I don't. But either. they made it seem like it was fucking his handshake that. Uh, that you know caused the the tracker to not go on there perhaps so but anyway that's where it ends i thought this was a great episode overall like i'm at this point between the the episode 10 and this one i'm like fuck yeah man this is like we're rolling now they're really yeah, pushing this this one gave me hope that like all right things are starting to progress yeah towards the ultimate end yeah not the ultimate You know what? Never mind. I'm just not going to finish that thought. <laughs> right. Going to let it go. We don't need two references or almost references in the same show. <laughs> don't need to do that. Yeah. Just going to stop talking. All right. And then we're going to move right into the final episode. This is episode 12. The Juggernaut, bitch. What? Did you, hear Did you move a box or something? No. Is the box with us in this room right now? Seriously, you didn't move anything? No. You didn't hear that? Hear what? Oh, my God. <laughs> I don't know what's going on. I'm going to watch I'm going to watch the YouTube footage, and I swear to God, there was like a box or something that moved. It's the ghost of the studio. <sighs> that wouldn't surprise me. <laughs> All right. Anyway, episode 12, the juggernaut, bitch. Uh... Starts off with Omega back on Tantus. You know, she she arrives, fucking the assassin gives her a nice fucking shove. Yep. You know, he's like, yeah, there's no fucking locals here that are going to catch me on video. You right. Know, fucking manhandling this girl. So, which I thought was hilarious. Get the fuck out. Yep. And, yeah, he, Hemlock's all like, no need for the binders. You know, whatever. Where the fuck yeah. are you going to go? You no longer need those. Right. Click, click. Yeah. And then, all right, follow me. Yeah. Like, uh, okay, yeah. I guess. And that's it. He's pretty he's pretty much by the book and just like, all right, let's go. Let's go. Follow me. Yep. And then we see the lookalike fucking uh uh Yeah, old, that's uh, where the scene yeah. where we see the other redheaded probably clone doctor or mistaken mm -hmm. footage, whatever whatever right. you want to believe. Right. I think that there's like a whole group of those female clones working in this fucking center. It's gotta be something. It's gotta be something to do with like that they they genetically changed them to be females instead of males like i don't know maybe they thought they were fucking smarter don't, or some shit don't 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 let's let's not give them any ideas jason okay i don't why would they i don't know i'm just saying like that's you know something that that could have been in their mind like hey maybe if we change their fucking I, you know genetically I, mod their gender then they'll fucking uh we'll unlock some other shit 
I don't know. Who knows what the fucking Caminos, Caminoans were thinking? I just, I just don't think. I don't think it makes any sense to have a bunch of fucking broads to have made a bunch of broads. Like at this point, the uniqueness of these clone females, Omega and Emery, Emery. Thank you. I was going about to say in <laughs> the fuck? like the capital of oh, what's the, the capital of inch. Um, oh, it's a, it's a, I have no idea what the fuck you're talking African about. African capital. Of an African Cradle country. of fucking civilization. <laughs> yeah, yeah. This motherfucker out here trying to buy yellow cake from the motherland. I don't drop that shit. I all right. Never. You know what? Never mind. I'm fucking. <laughs> Just don't drop that shit. Yeah. I, I'm fucking. <laughs> <laughs> yellow cake. Fucking right. <sighs> anyway. So uh, yeah. Meanwhile, while Omega is getting delivered back to fucking Hemlock, the Batch comes up with a great idea. And they're like, hey, uh, Crosshair's like, I know this one guy who knows where Tannis is. He's the old fucking, you know, leader over there, that Admiral Rampart, mm -hmm. who, uh, you know, got uh, <clears throat> demoted. Right. You know, in, in, in previous episodes. I think it was last season, actually. Like, I don't think we've seen Hemlock at all this season. I don't. Or not Hemlock, but um, fucking Rampart. Rampart. I can't remember when his fucking shit happened. But either way, they're like, yeah, Admiral Rampart, he's in this fucking Imperial prison camp. So we'll get him and he'll tell us where Tannis is. Brilliant idea. Brilliant idea. Yep. Um, and they, 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 that they weren't more pissed off that like, hey, you're, they acknowledge that like, hey, you, you're just now fucking telling us this shit. Yeah. Like, they should have been more pissed off about that. At Crosshair. Yeah. Like, yo, uh, I don't care how fucking bad of a plan that would have been. It would at least know to know that that's a potential thing. Yeah. Would have been nice. Yeah. Would have been nice. Something that could have been brought to my attention yesterday. yesterday. Yep. So, yeah. So that's what they're doing in this episode. And it's, it's real just kind of standard by the book. Infiltrate uh, a fucking prison camp. Get the guy out. You know, all of the action sequences that would go with that. Right. Um, I did think that the big fucking um, the big tank or whatever that they were driving. I think that's the same kind of tank they were driving in uh, Mandalorian yeah, in the Bill Burr episode. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. I think it was that same kind of tank. So that was cool. That was a neat little throwback. Um, but I mean, as far as like what happened on fucking uh, uh, during the prison break, it just nothing, nothing special stood out. You know, you get your your Wanda Sykes in there, you know, doing her little uh talking and everything but um the, the most interesting part of this episode was the hemlock and omega yeah um because we go back there and you know he's just talking to omega just like openly talking about all this shit and he said that um you know all of their experiments to do an m count transfer failed until they combined omega's blood with another specimen and they got a positive m count transfer he didn't say who you really fucked him up didn't you <laughs> Um, but they didn't say who the other transfer was from. And then he stuck her in the fucking vault with the other kids. Right. And that was kind of the end of the episode. But, you know, I had a thought. Now, tell tell me if this sounds crazy, um, if I'm reaching, but what do, you, what do you think are the odds that Grogu plays a part in this? Hmm. Because we know from Mandalorian that he was, um, you know, sought by the Empire for the same purposes. So I was half expecting, um, you know, Grogu to be in this fucking, you know, vault with the rest of the kids. Hmm. I wonder how that timing lines up. Well, because we know he escaped the purge, right? Because uh, what's yep. his name? Grabbed him and took him somewhere. We don't right. know. So, um, yeah, we're only talking like a year after that. So he's probably still safe at that point. But we don't know for sure. Right. But, yeah, I just wonder, like, I could see them doing, like, his blood was the one they combined Omegas with to have the positive M count. And that's why, you know, they're after him, you know, all these years later. Mm. Just a thought. Uh, a theory based on no facts but my own speculation. I mean, that's not that far. I mean, I I think the only sticky wicket with that is is the timing, right? Yeah. To see if the, the films, you know, lines up. To make that work 
Yeah, it's a pretty big gap that we don't know what the hell was going on yeah. with Grogu. Um, you know, from the moment he was rescued. From I don't the, know how, how I'd feel about him showing up. Honestly. Yeah. Um, like an animated version of him. I don't know how I'd feel about that. Yeah, it'd be tough. Because, you know, they don't want to steal the thunder from, like, the Mando movie that's coming up. So, yeah. Anyway, um, that was just a theory that I had. But that's kind of the end of this episode. They got Hemlock. And, oh, yeah. When they fucking break him out, finally, he's like, oh, well, I don't actually know. Rampart. Rampart. Oh, yeah, I said Hemlock. Yeah, when they got Hemlock out. Ah! Ha! Rampart! <laughs> and, uh... Yeah, he's like, well, I don't actually know where it is, but we might be able to figure out, you know, how to how to crack the code and, and do that. We're all in it together now. Yeah, they should have just split his head open. Yeah. Like, honestly, yeah. or waterboard him or something. Yeah. Like, <laughs> I, I, like it, it. this is where it gets to the point where it's like, all right, you're going to go dark or you're not. Yeah. Like the time. The kid that the kid at work that has been watching this, he kind of alluded to the fact we had I I'm, I haven't talked to him since I caught up on the episodes, mm. but he did mention that it kind of it's like at a plateau. Like these episodes p have put this at a plateau where you just like come on, like, yeah. You, it's right at the precipice of 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 getting to the the good shit, yeah. And I mean, to me, there's no. There's no like redemption season. There's no like you. There has to be finality here. Oh yeah. And I don't. I think we're at a point now where it's like there's no more Wanda Sykes fucking saving the day. There's like they have to get the information out of fucking old boy. Mm -hmm. However they do that, whatever. Yeah. Right. They, they if they bring it out of them like a fucking toothpaste tube. However they have to do it, they they need to do it. Like they have to. They have to get dark. And to to get to the point where, I mean, obviously everything is going to converge on Tantus, mm -hmm. you know. So I and I future like as we you know talk what we think is going to happen right in mm -hmm. the next four episodes. Three, we've only got three left. The next three episodes, um, I think, along with everyone dying, like obviously <laughs> I have money on that, but yeah. I think that Palpatine is going to play a part in it. I could see that uh vader we're gonna see vader like you know they're they're gonna show up in force yeah because this is palpatine's project for the future and he's not gonna leave it to uh, i'm not gonna fall off on a banana and a tailpipe you know he's not leaving <laughs> yeah. it to hemlock to fucking fuck up yeah if he senses that shit's about to go down he'll right. You know, somebody raising the flag like Tarkin, maybe. Yeah. You know, yeah. this interaction with Tarkin maybe throws a flag like, hey, man, your boy's struggling. Yeah. Yeah. You, know, you might need to check up on that. Because, mm -hmm. um, yeah, this is Palpatine's immortality plan, right? Right. So this is this is what he's doing to keep himself yeah. alive and in charge forever. Yeah. This is the plan to make the Empire last forever. And so he's not going to leave it to chance. He's yeah. going to he's going to show up. And I mean, like Dave's in Dave's brain, like what he sees right now, as sick as it is, is, you know, the batch is going to do their best to try and keep to get Omega out of there. Mm -hmm. And they're not they're going to fail because they're going to they're just going to encounter. They're encounter resistance that they just can't overcome. Yeah, I could see that. And. So they're they'll all be eliminated. You'll have. Uh, fucking, uh, ponytail chick, fucking Emery, Emery, and Tebby, which is the capital of Uganda, by the way. Ah, uh, that's gotcha. that's why. That I that's not a reason for it to be in my head, <laughs> but that's that's where it came from. Sure. Um. Yeah, you're gonna have her probably trying to get Omega to safety, and her get annihilated. Yeah. Uh, in the same way, and then and then you're gonna have basically Palpatine peel Omega like an orange to fucking use her what he for whatever he needs to do to advance to the next level, and and that's it. I mean that would be crazy dark. Somehow I doubt it's gonna unfold like that, but 
Yeah, no, we will see deaths, but I, I still say Omega survives and I, either Hunter or uh, Wrecker survive. Well, it's Smirking Bear, like the, you know, talking about would Palps let Vader into an immortality plan? He doesn't necessarily need to. Yeah. Like you, you, you can have Vader show up and be like, hey, hey, take care of the bad batch. Yeah, or you, whatever. he doesn't have to know why. Take care of the wayward clones. Yeah. Ensure all of the clones are dead. Yeah, apparently in the comics, though, Vader has gone to Exegol, so he might have seen some of that shit anyway. I don't know. Yeah, but that's later. True. I think he goes to Exegol later. Because doesn't he go to Exegol to fucking confront Palpatine, and Palpatine beats the fuck out of him? Yeah, and as he, he does. Yeah. Like, I'm going to teach you a lesson. Something like that. Yeah, but I, yeah. I don't remember. But, you know, this last episode, this juggernaut, it it felt almost like a filler episode, you know? Because mm -hmm. the, the, basically the Batch were on a side quest to find some fucking dude who, at the end of the day, couldn't even tell them the information that they needed. So it was mm -hmm. their whole story was a fucking waste. I'm sure they're going to eventually get something from him because I, I think he's part of the Batch now, you know, fucking um, Rampart. But uh, I think they just... I think they're the next... The next episode, the first scene coming out of the, like, you know, where it says skip intro, uh -huh. it comes out of that and you see Rampart's body just like falling like <laughs> towards, towards the earth or whatever. Yeah. And then they're like, well, we got the information. And then they're flying to the, fucking Tantus. They just shoved him out of the yeah, ship. <laughs> just like, hey, thanks for the information. Whee! And then fucking throw him out there. No parachute or anything? Nothing. Just, okay. just fucking gone. Okay. That would be funny. He did give them a lot of shit. Um, yeah, fuck that in guy. In previous seasons, so he's a real dick. Yeah, giant penis. <laughs> <laughs> my, my penis is so smooth. <laughs> yep, but that was it. That was the these four episodes. I think um, for the most part they were good. You know, they just uh, for only having three episodes left, twenty fucking three minutes each. Yeah, there's not a lot of time left. No, and I I honestly expected at this point to be like, I expected to be on a steady climb. Yeah. I, I didn't expect to be like, okay, we're going to plateau here and then climb it slightly and then plateau again and plateau again. Like, yeah, I was really expecting this to be fucking a rocket ship. Yeah. Now, not to say that it, it can't do that in the next three episodes. It certainly can. Mm -hmm. Um, and I'm not saying that these episodes weren't worth watching because I was entertained for all four of them. Even the yeah. filler one at the end. We can, you know, the hindsight from this is going to be like, oh, we wouldn't have gotten to this without these episodes. Sure. Right? Yeah. But you know, at the end of the day, they this is how many episodes they're going to do. And so this, this is how many they're going to have. Yeah. And we're just we just have to be along for the ride again. We're controlling our controllables. Right? <laughs> yep. Um, uh, so, yeah. So that's it. Um, next week. We are getting back to the Light and Magic series on Disney+. Plus. Yes. We covered the first two episodes a couple months ago, and now we're doing episodes three and four next week. Yes. Did we tell Kelly we were doing that? Yes. I, I texted her okay. earlier. Uh, the, good. Yeah. We're not going to change that to do the other Tales of the Jedi. Fuck. Uh, TBD. Because we do have to fit Tales of the Jedi in there somewhere. Right. We might pivot and do the Tales of the Jedi since we now we have this fucking amazing Tales of the Empire thing that's going to be coming up like within weeks. Yeah, it may be worth re re fucking engaging. Yeah, on, on that. Well, light and magic we're definitely doing for sure next week. Okay. Yeah, yeah. But then after that, we'll uh, okay, we'll figure it out. All right. So anyway. Uh, we got any, uh, we oh, got any reads? Of course. And we are going to, uh, forego Miss Lopez ah, okay. this week. Which I'm uh, sure we don't have a new review anyway, so. we I'm sure that we do not. And it is almost 8 o'clock. Yeah. So it's a little late. And it's getting hot. It is. It is. How, how is it that we went from fucking needing the goddamn heat to two weeks later, now all of a sudden it's hot in here. I'm ready to turn on the AC. That's okay. In two weeks, it's going to be cold again. So, you think so? Yeah, I think so. <laughs> uh, I can't say I'm surprised. You know what? You know what's really fucking awful hmm. is when my, uh, I'm wearing a standard watch. Right, this is just a standard 
good old fashioned citizen, you know, diver's watch, not smart watch at all. Right. Mm-hmm. Because if I walk into a briefing, I, I want to be able to still have a watch on. Right. But I'll feel like a vibration. Like I'm wearing an Apple watch. <laughs> the, the phantom vibration, like yeah. you, you feel your phone vibrate in your pocket, yeah. but it didn't actually go off. And what's really fucked is like, so my phone's not even in my pocket, right? It's over here. And I guarantee you that there's a text. Maybe that's what you were hearing. The noises was your phone. Maybe. It's in... No, it, it, it was, uh, I don't know. But phantom vibrating is such a fucking real thing, <laughs> along yeah. with brain fog, which we established earlier. Thank you. Um, and, oh, you established that years ago. Yeah, and also fucking hot spots. Like, I get these, like, I feel like somebody's stabbing me in the leg with an electric pencil. It's fucking awful. <laughs> I think it's because I've been sitting for too long. Maybe. I don't know. Well, then let's get these reads done and uh, call let's it a night. Let's do that. Uh, but I can't just read it. Okay. I can't. So do we have to bring somebody in? Uh, somebody, Somebody's going to have to do it. Well, I mean, Hank's um, always old reliable, you know. He is. Did you see the SNL um, this weekend? I saw it on Instagram, the highlights. They, they apparently had... Um, I can't think of his name, but they had like a dude dressed up as Beavis, and they had oh, a really? dude dressed up as Butthead, like a live action Beavis and Butthead. Yeah, and they had him like they were doing a a, a thing with an astronomer, and it, <laughs> he was like, "That guy, I'm sorry, I can't focus. That guy behind you looks exactly like Beavis," <laughs> and and she's like, "Who? Like I don't know who you're talking about." And then the guy who's got the t-shirt on, he's got the fucking. I'm looking hair. at a screenshot of that yeah, right now. He's got everything, and, it, and he's like, he's like, "Oh, I'm sorry." Are, and he he talks like a normal person. He doesn't <laughs> it doesn't yeah. talk like that. He's like, oh, I'm sorry. Like, I, I'm am I distracting you? I'm sorry. I'll move. Right. And right. So he gets up and moves, and the guy who sits in the seats after him looks like Butthead. <laughs> <laughs> right. It just it, so it's it's just it's a, it was a good skit. Yeah. SNL has upped their game recently. I yeah. feel like they they've been they've been hitting the marks a little bit better. Like well, because they were just they were nothing but a fucking political show for the longest yeah. time. Ryan Gosling, thank you, Lunar Girl. Yeah. Ryan Gosling. Uh, I well, and maybe I, they've had the right people on to like bring some of the funny back, yeah. and and also maybe I'm only watching the funny bits because right. that's, that's what I'm clips. That's what I'm getting out of uh, you know social media. So right. I'm not seeing a lot of the bullshit. I'm only watching things that are funny. So that's true. It's a good point. Take that for what it is. Yep. This seems to be the easiest one to do. (laughs) So I'm going to do this one. Good evening. (laughs) An ATSW family happenings on Wednesday, Snooch, Big Lovin' and Dragon Buddy will be reminiscing 25 years of the 1999 flick Fight Club in which they are breaking their first rule. Catch those rebels at ATSW, the escape pod, live at 19.05, 705 Eastern on YouTube. <laughs> uh, you should reach out to Helmet Fire. He is a big uh, Fight Club fan. <laughs> this coming Saturday, Don Della Snooch and Lunar Girl will break down Stranger Things Has Happened, Season 4, Chapter 4. Dear Billy. Oh, Billy. <laughs> That's exactly what I thought, oh, too. Oh, Billy. <laughs> so jo- join them. What? Have they said what they're doing after they're done with uh, Stranger Things? Because I think they're on the last season, right? Oh, Billy. Oh. I don't know. I don't, I don't have any idea. <laughs> okay. Dear Billy. Oh, God. Join them. On their nipple watch journey at Stranger Things has happened, 1900, 7 p.m. Eastern on the YouTubes. Uh, can I interrupt you? I have another sidebar. Yeah, go right ahead. Do you know what I saw last week N- out, out in the wild? Nipples? No. A fucking uh, Tesla truck. 
Oh, really? The, the fucking cyber truck. Yeah. Really? Yeah. I saw one of those uh, pretty close to my work oh, shit. Uh, last week when I was out uh, uh, getting something from uh, Wegmans for lunch. Just driving through the fucking parking lot. This thing, it's so unnecessary. It's like just this massive, just fucking thing. This just in. <laughs> The fucking Tesla truck is hideous. I don't give a shit if it's bulletproof. I'd drive it. I f of course you would. <laughs> it's it's electric. Boogie woogie woogie. I I I I really like calling it a truck is. Yeah. It is no no it's not it's yeah. not a truck. It is, if anything, it's an SUV. Yeah, it, it, or a lunar rover or something. <laughs> but it's not. It's not a fucking truck. Yeah, it's cool. It's bulletproof. Like, awesome. Whatever. Hey, you know, fucking. I bet Tupac wishes he had a cyber truck back in the day. Yeah, but he probably would have had the windows down. Probably still would have gotten shot. He still would have got shot. <laughs> Fair enough. Layman's terms is now the layman. He has a new channel on YouTube, fresh new name with the same old drunken banter you love. Fuck, I was supposed to respond to a message of his. Give us, give him a sub, then ghost him like Jason did. <laughs> it wasn't on purpose, I swear. <laughs> then catch his latest, I boiled a hat, a cat showed up, and I dive into TCG Lorcana. Oh, and if you understand what that is, you'll enjoy the layman. Because I don't have any idea. <laughs> so basically, it's a new card game like Magic the Gathering, except it's Disney based. It's like Disney characters and shit. Like Cinderella. Probably. Cinderella takes 20 hit points. I mean, yeah, like essentially. Roll for sexiness <laughs> probably orange and fetch show released vandal football must die slash captain midnight last thursday catch them on spotify and apple and i believe he had posted something about might be doing the nine movie that is showing may the 4th Catch them on Spotify and Apple. Big Sweet is keeping busy in his studio, working on several upcoming releases. Follow Swede Studios on Instagram and Facebook for updates and sub YouTube. No news from Frogmore Art or Used and Abused this week. I'm looking at the chat to see <laughs> if there's anything I'm missing. No, I don't see anything. So, you can find us. Uh, <laughs> wait, what? <laughs> <laughs> you can find us at this side. Right, sorry. You can find us at bio.link slash the sidebar cantina where you will find our links to patreon youtube our audio podcasts on apple audible and spotify and all social media platforms including x instagram facebook twitch tiktok and discord none of those words are real words <laughs> once you get to the bio link simply click the symbols under our pick to go to your platform of choice. You can also find all of our past Spotify mixtape playlists. Also in our bio link is our T public merch shop. Choose from seven designs on everything from t-shirts and hoodies to tote bags, phone cases, exclusive Stickers and pins, wall art, magnets, notebooks, laptop cases, fuckable pillows, just about anything you I can imagine. I don't think that was in the notes. <laughs> I just read what it says here, Jason. Yeah, okay. 
nothing says loving loving like a naked jason chick on a pillow <laughs> it does say that go to bio.link slash the sidebar cantina and click merch reviews no new reviews which is <laughs> which is why hennifer isn't here today also yes or i just don't feel like it please write us a five-star review on apple or audible don't have an apple or audible account our facebook page has a review feature too just screenshot your review before you hit done and dm us the pic on instagram or twitter with your name and address so luna girl can send you a super cool atsw family swag pack this is your chance to tell us your thoughts on our show jason or hennifer lopez or hank or edith or a mama or me or somebody fun will read your review word for word on our next episode let us know who you want to read it finally if you watch us on spotify or catch us on spotify because mm -hmm. you can't watch on spotify you fool help us out and click those stars if you are listening to us on audio please consider joining us in the live chat on mondays the chat is most definitely where it's at if you are new to sidebar please subscribe ding that bell and select all to receive notifications when we go live remember to smash that like button it really helps us out all right and that, that is the news all right well thank you drunk broca and thank you everybody who's still with us in the uh in the chat and uh obviously thank you to all of our audio listeners yes obviously our our bread and butter our core where we started right we were audio before we were video what i'm trying to remember if drunk broca posted the last audio episode oh I don't know. Let's go with yes. <laughs> sure. All right, but that's it. Light and Magic 3 and 4 next week. And then we're ramping up to fucking uh, May the 4th. We got yeah, so man. much shit going on. Shh, it's going to be great. Yeah. Can't believe it's already almost May the 4th. I know. It's almost May the 4th, and it's almost our what? Which anniversary? It was 2017. So seven years. Seven years. Seven. Well, do it live. My girlfriend sucked it. thirty-seven dicks. Do it live. <laughs> yes. The sacred Jedi. <laughs> <laughs> I had to throw that one in there. I did. I, I I didn't hit it all day. So. What was the song that we were talking about earlier that I want to put the goat scream into? Let the bodies hit the floor. <laughs> Let the bodies hit the floor. Let the bodies hit the floor. <laughs> Oh, it'd be great. All right, we're out of here, guys. Until next time, Dave and everybody else, may the force be with you. May the force be with you. <laughs> Who is that? <laughs> oh, okay, now what do I click? <laughs> Very nice. Uh, all right, Kelly wants pictures of Black Series figures. Right, I'm going to eject. Eject! Oh, so what's uh, what's the story with that guy? Oh shit! I forgot. <laughs> well, thank you. So, what's what's the story with this? So that's the that's the guy I sent you the picture of. Well, no, I know that, but I'm just saying, like, you were just in the store and you're like, oh, Jason would like this. Whoop. Well, I I didn't. All right, so when you display the the figures. Uh huh. And I go, oh, okay. I'm, I get my hands on each one of them, right? You hand it to me, and I yep. look at it. Yep. And I don't remember seeing that figure. So right. I'm like, oh, okay. Which I don't have him. I'm like, I don't think Jason has this one. So let me text him. And I did, and you didn't respond right away. And I wasn't in Walmart for that long because yeah. I hate it. And it was like 8.30 in the morning or something ridiculous. <laughs> so I was like. Oh, yes. Yeah, so, so the people can see it. Yeah. It's so I'm like, all nice right, disguise. I don't think Jason has it, so he's going to have it today. So I fucking just, I just bought it. 
Oh, well, thank you. And then Jason got back, and he's like, oh, no, I don't have that one. I'm like, <laughs> very good, <laughs> yeah. so now you do. Right. Uh, how long will it take till Jason's Black Series completely takes over Dave's Pops? Probably very soon. <laughs> I mean, I'm not trying to. That's not my goal. Like, I, I obviously want the Pops on display as well. But... I have to figure out what I'm going to do with the Black Series figures. I'm looking forward to seeing a large display of the uh, Jabba's Palace. Yeah, so, so awesome. yeah, so I got to get... First of all, I'm going to immediately go on to, like, Thingiverse after this and see if they have, like, the, the base for him to sit on that I can 3D print or have somebody that I know 3D print it. Mm -hmm. Um but then I got to get Bib Fortuna. I want to get two Gamorrean guards. I think I have a loose Bib Fortuna somewhere. Um, if not, he's like super cheap. What a strange one to have loose. Yeah. Well, like I bought a bunch of like Black Series lots on eBay and stuff with a bunch of loose figures. So. Oh, okay. But maybe not. Either way. So I need Bib Fortuna. I need C-3PO. I need fucking two Gamorrean guards. Luke. I've already got Boba Fett. I've already got Han and Carbonite. I've already got Leia and fucking Lando in their disguises. So, yeah, I'm going to do, like, a whole fucking Jabba collage. So if you're going to do Leia in the disguise, then you're doing that specific scene. Then you don't necessarily need Luke. True, because he didn't show up until later. Right. Okay. So you have to choose whether or not you're going to do that with Leia or if you're going to do Leia right. in... Because then otherwise it's going to be continuity errors. And right. then people are going to be like, what the fuck, man? Yeah. Obviously, Leia was not in her disguise when Luke was there. So, seriously, you fucked up, you idiot. Obviously. <laughs> uh, save the pops and ride the Black Series. I don't know what that means. Save the horse, ride a cowboy. I think it was just an insertion. Of Is that from Brokeback Mountain? That sounds very Brokeback no, Mountain. No, it's a song. You're going to ride the cowboy? I bet you are. Yeah. Save a horse, ride the cowboy. Never heard that song? No. But you know what I have been listening to lately? I've been in this weird kick where I'm listening to like hit music from 10 years ago. And I'm yeah. just like discovering it now. I actually, this is kind of a guilty pleasure, but I actually like that Old Town Road song. With fucking uh, Billy Ray Cyrus and that one rapper guy. Oh yeah, I'm gonna make my way to the old town road. I I listen to that everyone. It's in my uh, it's in my uh, what it, what what playlist is that on? It it's in one of my playlists. Yeah. Especially when that bass drop hits, mm -hmm. it's actually like, it's actually fucking. When you're in a car and it's just like boom, boom. <laughs> yeah, get some. Yeah. I need to eject this. And I moved it over here because I. So transfer complete. Transfer is complete. All right. Then that means it's time to end the live stream. Thank you, everybody who's still out there. Yep. You guys are awesome. We love you all. We love you. Can't wait to see you again next week. And uh, yeah, until then, we will see you soon.